Me, 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 me. Why isn't it working? Why is it not working? Oops. Oh shit. Uh, <laughs> Why is it not working? Oops. Oh shit. Uh, <laughs> oh no, it is working. Okay, so hello and welcome to this semi final games. These are the semi finals. Um, and I'm just trying to get the bracket up. I'm a little bit unprepared here. I don't usually cast games. I'm usually just play well, I cast games that people send me for the membership rewards, stuff like that. But I don't usually cast games uh, live. In fact, this might be one of the first ones I've ever cast live. So I'm just trying to find the lobby. You're just going to have to bear with me. <laughs> uh, they haven't actually started yet, so that is not too much of a problem. So here we go. Here's... Right, so if, if you don't want spoilers for anything of the tournament, close your eyes now because I'm about to show the bracket as it stands thus far. You have been warned. All right, I'm, I'm showing it. I'm showing it. So here's the bracket as it stands thus far. Um, if I had time, I would have made like a cool trailer or something. But basically, this is Return of the Revenge of the Vab T20 Reloaded, consisting of Darix himself, the balance man himself, the guy I blame all my problems on, even though it's not... Uh... How do I stop that from happening? Uh... <laughs> I could put myself on Do Not Disturb, perhaps. Um, and uh... the guy I blame all my problems on, even though it's not his fault. And he's partnered up with Tiberius Rancor, who's also an extremely good player. And they're the French team, and they're up against Spartan System. Spartan System consists of NBK, of Warner, uh, Wargame Red Dragon fame, famous Wargame Red Dragon player, and NATO Boy, formerly known as Kotick444. I don't know if he played Red Dragon. I know that... Uh, so it's so Darix and Tiberius are French. I'm pretty sure NBK is Ukrainian. I don't know where NATO boys from. So it's uh, it's the West versus the rest. And uh, yeah, in terms of teams that these guys have had to come through, um, the <laughs> you'll have noticed that none of these guys have been particularly challenged up to this point because all of their wins have been 2-0s. So Spartan System beat Team Bedon 2-0, beat Team Moto Gang 2-0, I believe Moto Gang was Blitz War and Tortike or Tortique. Um, Blitz War, of course, famous Red Dragon player. Same with Tortike or Tortic. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, and uh, and yeah, so they they beat them two 0 and they beat Two Lakes One Cub two 0 I'm not quite sure who that was. Two Lakes One Cub. Um, and as for Derek's lot, they uh, Derek's and his alt they beat all their guys 2-0 as well. So this is the first time they'll have been challenged. You know, So you compare it to the other semi-finalists. This game's going to be played tomorrow, by the way, and T-Man will be streaming. Um, T-Man Suffers went 2-1 against Moron Park, and it went 2-1 against uh, Lactosas Intolerantes. Um, and Boss of the Gym went 2-1 uh, went against Bob Semple Bros. Uh, I think it got a bye against Vamos a la Player because it's 1-0. So I think it got a bye and it went 2-0 against Poland Mountain, which is Tofa and Nexon. So really interesting setup. I'm going to check the chat now. We're just waiting for them to start the game. Um, so it takes a takes a, a pretty minute to, uh, you know, etc. How's it going? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, R. Hello, Gian Paolo. Hello, Ali. NATO boy is either Russian or Ukrainian. Well, this is the thing, right? So I think so too. But if you call a Russian a Ukrainian or a Ukrainian a Russian in the current environment, people get very, very upset. They're still not in the lobby yet, but we can take a look at the drafting process. How's it going, Slavia? So uh, we can. So basically, all of the games are in the YS Discord, and so you can check the scheduling for all of the games in the YS Discord, so this isn't like personal information. So if we take a look, um, we'll talk about the rules a bit. So Spartan System is NBK and NATO Boy, going by Jesse. Rever Revenge of the Return of the Revival of the Vab T20 Reloaded is Tiberius Rancor and Darix. And uh, yeah, so first things first, you try and get the dates put together. So they were supposed to start 20 minutes ago, which is why I started the stream 15 minutes late, because I thought they would already be in game. They've also requested a five-minute delay. 
they also requested a, a five minute delay both teams so we'll be having a five minute delay so i might just get like heli attack two up or something while we wait for them to start the game which team is the hippie favorite i th i think these two are the favorites to win the whole tournament so I am absolutely rooting for NBK and NATO Boy to win. I really want them to win because um, I don't want to play against these two. But first I have to play my semi-final game, so, which is tomorrow. So, you know, I might just lose. <laughs> I might just lose. Um, I might throw. Uh, Menkar's a really good player, uh, the guy I'm going up against. And and then they swapped out their weaker player, Stanag, for a for a, <laughs> a replacement called Guard X Rooms, who's also a really good player. Uh, but no, Stanag's also a very good player. There are no bad players in the semi-finals. Do you know what I mean? Um, can you tell us when your game starts tomorrow? Yeah. 1500 GMT is when the draft starts, so it'll probably be 1530 GMT, so 3.30 p.m. UK time, which is GMT. Uh, we'll get the chat up as well. Oh, I've just realized that when I open this, you won't actually be able to... Uh... So, yeah. Okay, so we're talking about the draft. If I put the browser up, yeah, it's going to cover the whole thing. Can I not? There we go. So... These are the rules. These are the rules. It's best that you familiarize yourself with the rules. So team one bans one map. Who is team one? Team one is the top team in the bracket. So that's done randomly. So it's basically a coin toss. Because right? you see, it's we were team one against Moron Park. Then we were team one against Synthwave. Then we were team two against Lathans. And now we're team two against Menkar and uh, Guard Exrams and Stanag. Um, whereas, so team one has a clear advantage, by the way. It's worth mentioning. Um, so, you know, the two, two Team 2s, two Team 1s there, and uh, two Team 2s, two Team 1s there, and two Team 2s, two Team 1s there, so, and, uh, and two Team... So it's, it's not random, basically, it's, it's, clearly, uh, it's clearly weighting it, because, uh, you see, everybody's been having uh, that look. So that's that. So back to the draft. Just waiting. Just waiting for the matches to start. Grab yourself a cup of tea. Some biscuits. Uh, oh, somebody's pinged me. I was watching one of your games, and it was just you being ran down by TATBVs. Yeah. That's th <laughs> that's why Team 1 has an advantage. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> oh, hey, this guy has a PhD. I want a PhD. Give him a wave. Anyway, back to the draft. So, game one. Team one bans one map, team two bans two maps, and team one picks from the remaining maps. The maps are Cyrus, Tension, Airport, Teufelsmoor, Rock, Hesse, Ripple, and Airport, it was immediately banned. So, let's do the draft. Team one bans one map, so NBK and NATO Boy banned Airport, so we won't be seeing Airport, and Tiberius and Darex banned Ripple and Teufelsmoor. And then NBK picked Twin Cities, first Twin Cities game I've seen. Usually that gets banned. Usually that gets banned. Then um, then it's about the divisions. Game 1. Team 1 chooses to play as NATO are packed. And NBK chose NATO. That's incredible. I always... I, I, I think, and because I speak extremely loudly, everybody else thinks that... <laughs> That Pact has this clear advantage, but NVK has chosen to play NATO, so that's incredible. Um, so I think he's going to get rolled. Right, so they should be in game now. Show filters, spectate, running games, 2v2 games. What? Did they put spectate on? Default server name, Twin Cities. It might be this. Default server name. And they requested a five minute delay. Yep, so what we're going to do is we're going to pause and I'm going to set my timer for five minutes. I'm going to set my timer for five minutes. Oh, actually, we should wait till the end of the deployment, right? No, I'll just set my timer for five minutes. Otherwise, I might mess it up. I don't want to upset these guys. I've upset Derek's enough lately. <laughs> so, we're on Twin Cities. And we've got 82nd and 11th Cav versus 79Y and 4th Mortshutson. This is crazy. 
it's crazy seeing the different uh, different people's opinions. So Tiberius and Darek's banned first UK and banned third armored. The finals will be with the new patch. I believe so. I believe so, which is terrible news um, just from a competitive standpoint because it means it means if the finals involve NBK and NATO boy or they involve Menkar and Stanag or Guard Exrams, those guys have a clear disadvantage if the patch has just come out because me, T-Man, Tiberius and Darix get early access to the patches. So it's it's a shame, but it's not. Eugen hasn't made this decision. They release it when it's ready. Like they release it when it's ready. So, um, it's just uh, it's just something that happens. So I said yeah. So they ask for they ask for five minutes, and the game automatically puts a two minute delay in. So it's a seven minute delay. Um, so they picked fourth and seventy ninth. So. How long have we got left? We've got uh, 3 minutes and 37 seconds left until I can press play on this. Simply existing as the same universe as the man will upset him. I have no idea who hates Hippie more, Darix or the Yuki, both want his head! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've done my fair share of upsetting people. Um, I'm not some sort of agent of Putin, I just think... Uh, I think uh, my government shouldn't be sticking its nose in other people's business. That's essentially the, the long and short of it. Do the teams ban First UK because they hate the UK? Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, so you saw, if you've not seen it already, if you're waiting three minutes and you're like, man, I'm so bored, you could check out the Hippie YouTube channel and... Um, you can see that uh, you can see our so you can see Lathan's one of the top players playing first UK, and you can see in the tournament game, uh, Hippie and T Man playing first and second UK into Integer and Lathan's playing thirty nine wide twenty seventh wide. So that's that video, and you can see Lathan's and Integer playing first UK and eleventh Cav into Berlin Gropers and one one nine Y in this tournament. So if you if you want to see First UK and how rubbish First UK is, watch that game and watch that game and tell me what you think. I don't want to spoil the endings for you, but mm. how much time have we got until I can press play? Two minutes and seven seconds. So I wanted to play uh, Heli Attack 2 while I wait. So here we go. Now we're talking. Square Circle Co. Uh, arrow keys... Whoops. Oh, I got another one. I'm so good at this game. We go, we get a new gun. How do I change guns? How do I change guns? No, I'm getting shot. What the, what's the key to change guns? A, uh, what? <laughs> How do I change guns? It's not mouse wheel. Uh, comma, N. I'm pressing all the keys. I got shot again.
connected. Sorry, am I muted? Oh, it's because I pressed. Uh, it's because I pressed every key on my keyboard. Can you hear me now? Sec. Uh, there we go. Yep. And then. Right. So, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello. Mic check. So, here we are in Twin Cities, the map that I lag on when I look at it. And we have NATO Boy and NBK going up against uh, Tiberius Rancor and Darix. So, France against Eastern Europe. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, Twin Cities is a map you don't see very often because uh, I'm going to have to close some Google Chrome tabs or something. <laughs> Uh, cause I'm, I'm lagging a bit. Oh, it's cause I've got my video editor open. I was just, uh, I'll give you a, a sneak peek on, so, like, so that I was just working on some quotes for next week's videos. Just show you this one. This was, this is actually a real Napoleon quote. He actually said this. I've got loads of them about him just saying horrible things about women. <laughs> so that's, uh, th those are the quotes for next week. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll just close in some tabs to free up some hard drive space. Great. So let's talk about the map. So Twin Cities, a map that you really don't see very often because nobody likes playing on it. Um, apart from this lot, apparently. But it was NATO. It was NBK and NATO Bo's pick. And they chose to play NATO, which is absolutely mind-blowing to me. Um, it's, it's, really, it's always good to watch other high-level players play because I have a very set way of playing the game, right? I attack all game and then I either win or I cry about the game being unfair because it rewards defensive play, right? That's how I play. Uh, you look at T-Man plays, T-Man likes to defend all game. Um, you look at a wooden box, a wooden box likes to defend for half the game while sending units around the side to snipe my artillery. You look at Lath, uh, you look at like uh, Integer, he basically does the same thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, you look at Lathans, he likes air spam a lot and he likes to attack late. So it's always good to see that there's actually room for these people in the meta. It, it's really fantastic to see that because if everybody's just playing the same then um then it doesn't matter no you don't understand camo bob um whoever wins oh no i see your point choosing to play nato first is smart because it increases your chance to win with pact in the second round and choose side for the third round uh yeah because whoever wins game two well yeah, or you could lose game two and just lose the whole tournament. <laughs> Surely it's better to play Pact first. And then... No, hang on. Uh, what did T-Man tell me to do? Oh, of course, yeah, it is better to pick NATO first. It is better to pick... That's actually what we did in our games when we were Team 1. Uh, obviously, T-Man was handling that. I'm too busy winning the game, you know, to, to worry about that. Um, but yeah, it's better to pick NATO in, t in game one because yes, you'll get packed in game two, and then if you win, if you lose, the game's over anyway. It doesn't matter. <laughs> if you win, you get to play packed in game three because you get to choose. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I already knew this, and then I forgot it. So that's good news. This is why I like casting, learning so much. I'm on a map I haven't played, uh, with divisions I haven't played. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so game one, game one, people are picking NATO because it's the weaker faction. Yeah, and then so you'll get the stronger one in game two, and then if you win game two, you get the pick for game three. Yeah, it makes sense because if you pick packed in game one, and you win, great. But then you're NATO in game two, and you're probably gonna lose, and then the enemy gets to pick packed for game three. So yeah, it's always best to pick NATO first. Um, it's always nice to relearn things that I already knew. Anyway, deployments. So I'm sorry that the FPS is a little bit low. It's um, it's just this map. Uh, it uh, messes me up. So Fourth Motschutzen, a division with a very strong forward deployed contingent, backed up by not very good tanks in the late game. I bought this game and refunded it because it's so frustrating. So many mechanics and no tutorials, haha. But looking to buy again. Well, um. I would buy it before it leaves early access because the price might go up. And there was talk about some divisions that will be like DLC divisions unless you bought them in early access, in which case you get them for free. And there are lots of tutorials. There are lots of tutorials. So if you're going to buy it six months from now, I would buy it now. 
Has the sale just ended? I just saw an advert from Hewell. <laughs> Tell them I'm not buying your shit. Um, yeah, so let, let's talk about the deployments. So I don't actually know when this is going to start. Um, so we've got forward deployed 762, which you just, I just never see this unit because I think it's rubbish. But Derek seems to think it's worth bringing. <laughs> so he's bringing forward deployed 762 and getting it in one of these high rises. And um, these high rises that can't really see very far at all. I mean, you should put it here, really. Then you can see. But I guess he's worried about 82nd Airborne. Behind that, he's got two SPG 9s going to this building. He's f he's playing it very defensively. Very defensively. Avclerer going to here. Oh, no, they started, didn't they? Right. Uh, so we'll just start. <laughs> Actually, let's, let's cover the deployment. So he's got SPG 9s. One to here, one to here, one to here. Alfklerer going to here, and then a Führer going to Echo, and then presumably onto uh, Foxtrot. And then in mid, he sent another forward deployed machine gun, but that's going to here, so not even in the tall buildings. Strella to here, SPG 9 to here, and a Führer to here. So very, very defensive deployments. Over on the right, we got Tiberius Rancor. Darix has spotted him some forward deployed units, so Darix has given him some so three forward deployed Strella to get to Charlie. And behind that, you've got the very, very powerful, some may say OP, Razvedka BMP2, going to here. And then two more Razvedka BMP2 going to here. So they're, they're, they're really playing very defensively. Like, th there's no units going to Bravo at all. And the ones in Charlie are, are going towards the back, although this forest is fairly standard. And then behind that, Conkers, Conkers, Strela, and BRDM. So I'm going to expect about 10 million planes because there's just no units on the map. Going to NATO by an MBK. We've got, uh, we, we've got, uh, okay, so it's a split again. So NBK is sending forward deployed absolutely everywhere. So two airborne going to here. So we'll see some early action. Scouts going down to here. ACAVs and LAVs just going straight down mid. Very exciting. Backed up by, so CV's going left. ATAS, Cobra, Engineers, Dragon. M1 Abrams CP. So they're just going Hail Mary down mid. They want to take Charlie as fast as possible. On the right side, we've got... Uh, I thought it was two CVs then. More airborne units going for the town. And Lav's going straight down India. Backed up by an ATAS and Apache. And CVs. So I think we're about to see 10 million planes attack from Red 4. Because I don't understand where all their points have gone. And here we go, the planes start coming out. Doesn't Tiberius Rancor always open with two ASF? Well, here you go. You got Darix with three MiGs, MiG 23s, MiG 21s, Tiberius with four MiGs. And because you can you can listen in, so you know where the helicopters are because you can listen in. Although looks like they're not listening in because otherwise they'd know. <laughs> <laughs> So they're going straight for those helicopters, and there's no AA! There's no AA! There's literally none. Oh no, hang on, there's a pivot. So there go two ATAS. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of ASFs coming out from Darex and Tiberius. Literally eight, seven, <laughs> seven ASFs. So that should give NATO Boy and NBK the... Uh, the advantage, they, they, the uh, the confidence they need to know that there's not going to be that much on the ground. Because each of these is 150 points on average. Hang on. Oh, these are MiG-21 Bison AAs. I was confusing them with the MiG-29 AAs. So, yeah. Um, th these fighters, they haven't really accomplished anything. They got two helicopters. And sure, they've got the air. Um... It was strange to see NBK NATO boy not bring some stingers. Okay, I guess there's a stinger there. One stinger. But yeah, this FS Führer, he's got to get behind that house or he's going to go down. Very difficult to cast games on maps this big. And Blue just haven't bothered to buy any uh, ASFs because they know they can't fight them. There's too many. Over here, Darix basically gets Foxtrot for free. This Apache has stood up. And if he stands up, all these planes are going to come and kill him. First lot of planes has been evac, but there's still four there. He's, he's standing back down again. He's sitting back down again. <laughs> They'll still shoot it on the ground. And if there's so many of them, they will kill it. 
and there's only one stinger instead of two. So if Foxtrot goes down, then that puts the tick on plus nothing, although... No, no, plus two to NATO Boy and Co, because they've just taken mid. Crazy smoke coming out. This is this is the war game Red Dragon smoke. You smoke off your tanks so that planes can't kill them. This Apache will eventually go down because, yeah, there just wasn't enough AA here. He shouldn't. He should have kept it landed. To be honest, it was a mistake to stand up went with these guys flying around. And uh, none of these planes have gone down. That's uh, that's very very important. Which means that for the rest of the game, Tiberius and Derek have this eight ASF advantage. Um. 11th gets really bad ASFs, so that's not great for them. MI24D Stinger's trying to come up and stop this lav, because the lav can kill this, but now it's used its smoke. That's bad news, and more helicopters coming out from Darex for India. Very interesting to see uh, NATO boy just completely bail out on Foxtrot, but they really wanted these midpoints, and they've got them. Uh, they weren't really contested though, like Red hasn't actually lost a lot. First T-80BV on the field, M1A1A cab takes out the Conkers there, and the helicopters are doing a lot of work because there's just not enough stingers here. That Cobra's landed, it's going to get hit by an ATGM on the ground, that's a miss. I don't know if NBK's noticed that yet. Over here, the helicopter swarm deletes the labs, it'll get the stinger next. Power Avengers is going to be a big problem. This thing has a perfect stabilizer, so it can just drive around in circles while shooting with 70% accuracy stingers might get the lot of them honestly he just needs to fast path it down the road to avoid the rockets it's got a perfect stabilizer no what are you doing don't stand still don't stand still ah terrible micro decision to stand still there if he just kept keeps it moving the rockets will miss because the rockets aren't very good and they do a lot of missing and um particularly on moving targets Ah, uh, he's just right-clicked it. It's going to shoot anyway. Oh, you hate to see it. So this CV's probably going to go down now. This thing is aligning. He's got vision on it. There's a thunderbolt coming. Oh, it was an eagle. And the CV goes down before the eagle gets to it. So Darix is going to get that zone, and that'll stop that plus two tick. So if he just had that Avenger Paras on fast path, or just had it driving around in circles, the rockets wouldn't have really done anything to it. This Thunderbolt's got to be careful now, but the Eye Hawk's up, and that takes out the uh, the MiG-21 Bison. That thing's only got 8 HP, so it was a one-shot kill. Eagle should get this cluster before it can take out the ACAV. Eye Hawk assists again. Thunderbolt's taking out the helicopters. I'd love it to just go on this building, because he knows that's where the CV is from before. Command zone lost on left, thus putting Tiberius and, Rag uh, and uh, Darix on a plus one, because they've managed to neutralize. In fact, they'll take the whole zone, because this CV's back here for some reason, instead of up here. So that'll put them on a plus two. Mid's looking pretty stable for blue. They're trying to get up here, but it's taking them ages. Airborne leader's going to come around this way, I suppose. Playing it nice and slow. I don't understand why they've just given up on Foxtrot. They should have a big advantage there, but Darix isn't pushing. He's just... Oh no, he is pushing. It's just... He's just doing it very slowly. Do you prefer Broken Arrow or Warner? I prefer Warner because Broken Arrow's broken. <laughs> it doesn't work properly. <laughs> if it was... If it ends up as they imagine it ending up, it will be better, but it's not, right? So, we'll see. Anyway, in the middle here, we've got uh, T-80BVs assisted by T-55AM2Bs. Really interesting team play from these teams. Both, te both players on both teams are attacking everywhere, or at least assisting everywhere. Whereas, you know, when you see me and... Uh, T-Man play, for example, I'm on the left, he's on the right. When you see uh, Integer and Lathan's play... I'm, uh, you know, one's on the left, one's on the right. Whereas here, both teams have both players doing that, right? So I don't see Darix holding on to this for very long. Would love to see this airborne leader or something get in here. Like, there's no CVs on the way at all. They're just quite content to let that run down. Tiberius has basically swept this. There's nobody here. So engineers, dragon defense, lav defense. Um, in mid, you know... Ah, the Stinger misses, which is a shame, but yeah, Red's going to have a, a, a tough time getting into this. What they really need is a Grad, or a Urigan, because you just Urigan the forest and it gets them all. But Stinger eventually gets the Recon Helo, and the Airborne Leader's revealed, so this is bad news, because now the Airborne Leader's revealed, these guys are going to be sending guys over here because they know that there's a CV in this block. The Stinger is out of rounds, this is crucial, because there's two... MI8 MT govs on the way and yeah that Fuhrer went down on the right side sorry I'm one man casting four people <laughs>
in mid, that fight's still going on. This guy's probably going to die because he'll get stunned. Yeah, he's he's so screwed, bro. Oh, never mind. The the mortar smoke. The mortar smoke saves him. So this is a really powerful war game red dragon tactic. And uh, the longer there's... I, I really disagree with the idea of just having absolutely nothing in this zone at the start. Why didn't they just have two units? Right? One or two units would have slowed down the enemy a lot, like what's happening here. But instead they had nothing. Um, Supply Heli survives and the Molding MiG goes down. Oh, Supply Heli's probably going to die now. The Ihawk's out of ammo. It needs a supply. It needs a ground-based supply. This Ihawk's also out of ammo, so that's a big shame for Blue because they could have got one or two extra playing kills there. And yeah, th this zone has just been completely seeded. Completely seeded. And they want to go for this one because it's a plus two. It's going to be tough. That Stinger's not got any ammo. Over here on India, Blue has managed to take the zone, but without a CV. Okay, here's the CV. And Darix is going further. He wants Juliet. He'll run into that lav, though, and the lav should win. Thing is, Blue needs to consider putting additional forces over here, because if all this is just Q moved into Juliet, it is getting in. Got to be careful about those helicopters, though. Eagle gets one shot off, routes one. It's going to go down. Goes down to a combination of the Strells and the planes. That's bad news, because you don't get that many Eagles. SU-22 cluster, SU-24 cluster, didn't... Did it drop the bombs? Yeah, it did. It drops them in a big straight line. NBK misreads the pattern and reverses into the bombs. If he'd gone this way, he would have been fine. AB Toe 2, very scary, and to be honest, I would love to see Blue deal with this unit. They've seen it shoot, they should know it's there. Over here, India's getting counter-capped, that'll put NATO Boy and NBK on a plus one. Thunderbolt coming in for mid, I see Cubs. How many Cubs? Only one Cub and some Strellers. The Strellers don't really have the range, although the MiG-21 Bison's going for that Thunderbolt. Runs over all the... Ah, that's not... No, that's not gonna work out. <laughs> Another thing I've noticed is that NBK has been uh, selling the transports that the Ihawks come in, so he has to manually move them. First grad of the game out, very, very different playstyle to me and uh, me and T-Man versus Lathans and Integers. Totally different playstyle. Our, our games were so much more static than this. This is an extremely mobile game by comparison. And uh, yeah, NATO boy's got the Avenger up there, and yeah, he's just clicking, he knows about the perfect stabilizer. Um, and there we go, he gets him that time. Darix is looking very thin here, because the issue is, it, so if these get to, like, here, then they can start getting in from this way, so, like, this isn't gonna, well, this, this is an automatic cell, and it's gonna go past that Zikarungs and get picked up. It's an automatic cell because it's got no order associated with it. Grads out, finally hitting the middle there, but the ACAVs have been pulled back. Oh, there's only one now. Actually, it's, it's looking pretty bad in the middle here for blue, because there's only, oh, there's an M1A1 CP and an M1A1 ACAV. And there's not that many T-80BVs faced off against it. No supply purchased as of yet for the grad. I'm very interested in NATO boys play over here. So what's what's the next plan? The next plan is going for Delta. Yeah, sorry. Going for Delta. And there's really not that much in the way. The T-55 AM2s are not going to be able to stop this. There's M1A1s in the mix. Plenty of Marder 1A3 Milans. Yeah, just those fighter purchases at the start. They expected a heli rush and they didn't get one. There were four helicopters. They got three. Two ATAS and Apache. Um, actually, I think they might have got four because wasn't there two on this side, two on this side? Now there's none. But it didn't really pay for itself. This is not good. NATO boy hasn't noticed that his automatic passing is just taking him past all the enemy. So he's going to lose this to the because that's going to get a shot off. No, hang on. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> the, the, it fired from outside its own circle, but hopefully he's awoken to that epic knowledge now. Whereas Ved could be MP2 going around the side here, but without the Conkers, it's not particularly useful. Also could just get sniped by a plane, but the, this is a big hole in uh, in Blue's lines. Bradley somehow got round from the back here. <laughs> What's going on there? And this CV is going to get in there, which will put NATO by an MBK on a plus four. Eagle circling, he's expecting something. There's a MiG-21, MiG-23, sorry, I, I get my MiGs mixed up. Because uh, they don't have cool names. Like, uh, there's the MLD, the Molding MiG. Uh, zones, that's the one we spoke about. Right. Here's the 39Y blob, or the 79Y blob, with normal T-80BVs instead of T-80BV is. So this guy needs to get in these trees. Like, where's he going? 
He's just walking into the field. <laughs> He's going to get torn to pieces. Uh, BRDM2 went down over here. Right, so big attack from Tiberius and Darex across two fronts simultaneously, trying to overwhelm their opponents. And you see this wrap around here. Really mobile game. N1A1s have actually been uh, redirected into mid. And this, I just, yeah, so then this leader's leaving now, but all this infantry can't stop that push. It, they needed the, these tanks, but they decided that mid is more important than delta. This guy really just needs to get to here, surely. Although, actually, that looks like it's open. So he's just getting him out. Um, Bison survives. Strella's going to open up on that eagle. It's about to fly over the cub range. He takes out a uh, 23 ml, but now the cubs and the Strellas are going to open up on him. It's not looking good for that eagle. Uh, the CV's got in. Blue's attack's doing all right. They just need to watch out for the side shots. The eagle actually gets out. The Apache survives. Ihawks take out the 23. What a swing. So, you know, Darix, he's succeeded. He's got, he's got Delta back. And they've managed to get a hold into... Uh, what's this one? Charlie. Charlie? But the M1A ones, the, the decision to send the M1A ones out of here and back into here was actually an extremely good one. Because now there's massive fire superiority over here. Seeds coming out to spot the cubs, but the molding migs, they just don't seem to run out. And that gets taken out by the molding migs on the first pass. So pretty unpleasant air RNG there. But the Ihawks get their revenge, they both hit. No counter battery on the AA pieces. Um, th sending the CV tank first is certainly a decision. It's one of the decisions of all time. This CV leader is going to get in here, but without smoke, he will get spotted by this TABV here. So he's probably just going to get lit the fuck up. Yeah, that man's dead. I don't. <laughs> he's not even trying to get him out. <laughs> he's sending him forwards. <laughs> so that's a shame. Would have loved to see some smoke abuse there. One smoke, one mort of smoke. Smoke, 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 smoke. Get the CV in. There is a backup one. Over on this side, uh, airborne leader. That was over there. Mech rifles went down. NBK is going to have a tough time pushing him out of here because of the forest. Really good uh, M1A1 micro, though, and I'd love to see this uh, Humvee Toe 2 brought up to here, perhaps. He's got an LRS to here, so he'll stop further wraparounds from this direction. I do wonder if these guys are bothered to bring any artillery at all. It's just such a mobile game that nobody's got any time for it. That guy's so dead. So there you go, two leaders down in Delta. Just, just a little bit too greedy, just a little bit too greedy. And uh, Red's managed to stabilize. Check the chat now. Um, how are you? I think I've missed lots of messages. Hippie has a good point. Yeah, I do. Uh, the supply heli is extremely important. The plane trade was worth it totally. <laughs> yeah, bro, the 60-point supply heli. This is uh, this is the Blackhawk one, not the Chinook one. So they get about six of them. Right, here we go. Big push coming in now. Apache's out. Smoke mortars once again. Um, would love to see... I, I, it's a shame there's no smoke mortar here. So NBK clearly hasn't taught NATO boy well enough to, to use the smoke mortar strap. And Bradley survives. Yeah, there's a bit of a problem with the wraparound here. This would be the perfect moment for some artillery. But these guys are just content to just buy more front line constantly. That grad's reloading, though, and that's going in there. If only they had the M270 here. They would clean them up. So the Strella's not in the best spot. This one is, actually. I think it is going to hit that Apache. It looks like, yeah, it is. It's doing it. And this man will immediately begin spinning, which means that you can't control him anymore. <laughs> but he manages to get out of the way somehow. And yeah, they need infantry if they want to clear this out because they're all in the forest, right? Apache does help, but this Strel is also going to shoot eventually once it gets out of that tree line. Over here, Darix has burst through. Got to be a bit wary about the infantry. Looks like he's coming for India eventually. And yep, yep, here we go. He's going forward slowly for Foxtrot. Lav claims it's first victim, which means he knows about it now. NATO boy sending a couple Sheridans over there. Apache gets hit by the Strella, begins spinning around in circles. Now it's just down to RNG. He's actually trying to 1v1 the Strella. <laughs> yeah. Down he goes, down he goes. Um, this Apache is about to get shot by that. No, that's going for the infantry. They're just trying to buy time. But the IHOCs, they, the IHOCs are having a very good game today. This one's gained a rank of veterancy. It's killed so many units because this one's one vet. Eagle's still circling. Grad has cancelled its firing. TABV's here, but they're getting picked off by toes. And crucially, there's no recon in this block. And the, the Strela goes down. And the C-Knight the C -Knight dodges, switches to low altitude. He's actually just landed, which means the tanks might shoot him. You can still shoot your rockets while you're landed. 
Yeah, you can still shoot your toes while you landed. This is going for the C Knight, but the T eighty PB is firing an ATGM at the C Knight. Oh, he dodges one. He's trying to stand up. Will he stand up in time? The Eagle does not get the Molder on the first pass. This, this man, he's got to dodge Estrella now. He dodges the Estrella. The Eagle survives. The MiG-23 goes down to the Ihox. These haven't moved. Get some artillery on them. Over here, Darix has managed to break through. The T-55 is going to get in here, and that will put them on a plus two. So that's pretty big, actually. Humvee CV in, in reserve. Um, this is actually a huge problem. So I don't know if NBK knows about this. He can just move these up, but well, it's too late for that one. But he might be able to get those. Bombers over here going for the right, and Blue has claimed center at the exact same time as Derek took India, so they're about to be on a plus something. No AA here, so the Apache gets brought over. We'll see how many ASFs are left in the deck. MiG-21, is it going to use its guns? They could just use their guns. Here comes a MiG-29 this time, going for that Apache. He's trying to get the CV. Does he see it? He, he, that that was a huge kill. That was a huge kill. He's going to die now, but that was so worth it. That was so worth it. <laughs> because now it's plus nothing, and the C, CV can get in. He's got more Cobras. This he's he, That's going to unload in time. It's going to be hard for Red to get through here, particularly without tanks. Um, and there's there's just not that much reinforcement here. It's all over here. Um, Darix and Tiberius trying something else in mid. NBK playing the game of his life. All the players playing extremely well here. The CV is going to try and get into that corner. Will it get spotted? Probably not. There's no recon here. That bomber's still got it as bombs. Will they go for the tow Cobras? Just no IHawks here. I mean, bringing the IHawks at one vet was definitely an interesting decision, but then you only get two of them instead of three for this whole map. It's kind of rough. That air bond's going forwards, which is uh, interesting. Oh, I see. Oh, no. Where are these labs going? So is, is he just going to try and YOLO down here? How is he going to deal with the Sheridan? Tow Cobra's going in on the T-55s. This is about to recap, which will put NBK and NATO by on a plus two. Over here... Tiberius and Darix desperately trying to get in. They preemptive grad strike, but there was actually nobody there. NBK had his guys withdrawn. One Tobra Cobra goes down to probably this these Strellas here. Sheridan pushing up. I don't understand why NATO boys attacking. This don't bother attacking here, mate. Get get in mid. Do you do your thing. Right, so now you see the uh the heavy MG versus the helicopter. The heavy MG might stun it. Okay. Maybe next time. He's low cohesion. I think he might just die. Oh, no, that was a miss. BMP2 destroyed. Over here, the fight's heating up. Got three T80 BVs here. Um, Tiberius doing a great job of keeping him alive. T55 did lose to that Tow Cobra. This attack's not going to go anywhere. This was a really big mistake, actually. He should just defend here. He really should, because if they lose Juliet, they're going to lose. You've already got mid. You've already got the tick. Another Malden mid coming out for the Tow Cobras. Uh, you hate to see it. They should expect that to happen. There's just so many helicopter, uh, anti-helicopter planes in these decks. This Cobra's gonna really mess up those poor Machiki. Just more infantry needed over here for NBK, but he is playing 11th Cav. He doesn't really get it. And that LAV is gonna go down to the homosexual if he's not careful. Plane's doing some strafing runs, and uh, NATO boys bought a... Uh... We've got some defense here. To be honest, they should not have tried to attack here. This was a big mistake. You're winning. Why Why throw it? This CV is going to get in. NATO boy's got a lav here. He could bring it up here and kill it. Could bring it up here and kill it. I don't know if he knows. Uh, over here. Yeah, so it's even Stevens now because that zone's been neutralized. F-16 being chased. Going in for the TAEBV. Gets a supply truck instead. Um, the MiG-23 is going to go down. No, survives. Ihawks out of missiles. So supply coming in for those Ihawks. Um, this is a real swing. I, I'd love to see Nail Boy get this up here. Does he not? Does he think it's a tank? Because there's nobody here. They're gonna lose India if they're not careful. What? What a game. Tiberius making his play. He's gonna try and get in here now. There's a CFV here. How many toes has it got? Many. So it'll probably hit that, but this one is empty. It's a real problem with keeping everybody supplied. That C Knight's going to get hit by an Igler if he's not careful. Takes a hit, uh, runs away, runs towards. Igler goes down. <laughs> this CV is not long for this world. I, I just, it's a shame about this lav, man. Just bring that lav up. Come on. 
And yeah, additional forces really needed in India. Plus two now for Di Tiberius and uh, Darix. Bradley just taking the chance. It's going to hit it. Well, it hit, it dies for it. But that's now a half HP TABV F16 AT misses its shot. This guy also has rounds. <laughs> he could also try for it. He's just going to hide it here. Um, just buy more and more M1A ones. More and more M1A ones. Is that guy going to... He's going to die. He's going to get hit by the rockets. That's a crying shame, that. So he loses him in the transport. F, F1 more than F cluster. You don't see this very often. So that tank's got to start moving. It's low cohesion, but they're really fast. Oh, that was lucky for Tiberius. Uh, these guys are getting picked off. Need some AA here. Pivot's going down the main road. This CV's got to go back. There's T-55 coming. MBK, he's got M1A1s coming in. Airborne's been unloaded preemptively. Marder's being moved up there. So there's going to be a plus four for Tiberius and Darix in a second. This guy doesn't have AT. So he needs to send the tanks in. So this guy goes in first. But then what if the BMP-2 gets a side shot? That's what this guy's for. The power of combined arms warfare. Humvee toe opening up on the BMP-2. M1A1 gets it first. Scout spotted the CV. ACAV going to deal with the infantry. This guy, he's trying to go for the tank. But a oh, ah, bit of a wacky micro decision there. Um needs to move this up. Yeah, that's that's attack moved up to there. Another cluster coming in. This time going for the bigger blob. They all smoke. It's not going to make a difference. you got to drive. Um, Estrella's been spotted now, hopefully. Command zone over here. They get back in. Just a real shame about this. If NATO boy brought the lav over, he'd be able to take it out. And Darix really wants to go into Juliet. You can tell. And so I really think NATO boy should be defending and not attacking here. Um, but yeah, the longer Tiberius stays in this zone, the less the lead of their of the opponents. Um, Bradley opening up on those guys now. It's a juicy shot, but it's got to it's got to smoke. You got to smoke. You're not going to survive that. No. F15 circling, T8BV back out the zone, uh, but it'll take like a minute to recap. Hivaz just drove down the main road and appears to be one v oneing an Aufklärer. Uh, it's going to lose. <laughs> because of what? <laughs> he's not even driving it, he's just forgotten about it. But this guy, you'll shoot, he'll hit. And, oh, okay. What? Uh, these two will definitely get him. Uh, T-80BV went down. <laughs> Sorry, I've been missing the big fights. One of the CV tanks did go down. Over here, Darix is trying something. Um, it's just a real shame about this lav. <laughs> just send it up, get a kill. Uh, BTR-60 is just going YOLO. Panzer Grenadiers going to be able to stop that. M113A3s with just dragons and mech rifles law just for the spam. TABV's trying to get in. NBK smoking his Abram so he can move them around. Needs more supply for those. They're getting pretty low. M1A1's engaging in mid now. So this should be a roll for blue unless Darix can get some reinforcements in. But he's put so many faggots here, right? Like he's been spending a lot of points here. Nothing's actually happening there. Uh, over on this side, T80 BVK gets in the zone. Uh, Humvee Toe is engaged in the wrong target. It's going to get counter towed. Did it miss? What happened there? Didn't even see that. Uh, Marder 1A3 is going up against Conkers. Uh, needs to smoke off. He doesn't actually see it. This is an AT plane. What's that going for? SPG 9. More AT planes for mid. Uh, Eagle still circling. So this one's about to run out of fuel. So they bring in the next one. Uh, low M1A1 still engaging. This guy might go down. NBK, I don't think he's paying attention. He's trying to keep it painted for the F-16. Get, smoke gets off in time. MiG-29's still on the field. I would have thought these would all be dead by now. So that Abrams is still fighting. Airborne, finally. Somebody with an AT-4. Somebody who can deal with this. LRS managed to move up to there, but they can't fight that T-80 BV, so they're gonna go down. M1A1's over here, slowly but surely pushing them out of the zone. That conquers, though. That is a serious issue, and so is the Faggot there. Uh, let's have a look at reinforcements. Finally, artillery purchase. So Darix is just going to try and hit the CV, but he's using the small caliber one, so it might not work. But he knows exactly where it is. So M1 Abrams just charging forwards. No recon, no problem. They're just going to eat the first shot and the second shot and the third shot. Uh, <laughs> so I, I don't know about this one at all, man. You should have brought some recon. <laughs> On VCV, I don't think uh, NBK has noticed that he's slowly losing that. It needs to move it, otherwise it's going to go down. 
Oh man, uh, he's not moving it. He's noticed. He's noticed, but he's driving right into the path of that next shell. Oh no, hang on. That, yeah, that actually saved him. Over on this side, the lav has finally been engaged. And it, this is really intelligent, right? When you do your big push, you use the back... That, that's when you activate your backline units. TABV has been brought out, and uh, that's going to be plus something to... No, that's finally a, an end of the tick. 12 minutes left in the game. The lav has to smoke because one of these guys had a conquers. But the idea is that when you start attacking, that's when you start bringing in your uh, additional assets. He's trying to get into minimum range. He's rushed forwards. I think he's done it. Yeah, he's got into minimum range. So that's a nice one. Now he needs to spot this. These guys had to get back and there's no supply waiting for them. So they'll be gone for quite a while. Over here, we, we just lots of red going down on the screen. Mech Rifle's law finally making the difference. He's finally got the infantry that he needs to clear this out. F-16 AT being used in its multi-role functionality. IHawk's finally got some rounds. Maybe the Gwazdika can start setting up on those. RM-70 purchased it. LRS have done for an attack move. And the Faggot and the Conkers have just ran out of ammo. But no more reinforcements could get here until they deal with the lav. So Cobra's finally being sent forwards. A the TABV queued up on that side. Darex is trying some it here, but it's light-skinned units. Just, uh, you know, skin regular human skin against the LAVs. Sheridan's making names for themselves over here. It's only a matter of time before the CV gets down. Uh, once as soon as the LRS sees it, the Cobra is going to light it up. Next grad volley is going for the CV, but NBK's just moved it back. LGBT on the field. Where's that going? It's going for the CV, but I don't think he needs it. Next reinforcement also gets intercepted by the lab. Uh, but he's unloaded. Uh, LGBT whiffs its shots, but that doesn't matter. NATO boy and MBK back to a plus two in about 10 seconds. Over on this side, Tiberius did manage to keep his T-80 BVK alive, so that's that's crucial, actually. And they're just trying to snipe the CVs with artillery. Over here, ah, no, he's done the same thing again. The automatic reinforcement pathing is just taking him past Darix, and so he's losing all his stuff. He's just losing all his stuff. Um, this guy is about to run out of ammo. He needs to put people here. This is one of the ways that uh, Blue can still lose this game. If Darix just goes ham on this side with uh, all the artillery, gets the grads on the go, um, then he can take that. So they, they really need to reinforce that. And we see those reinforcements coming in there. M35 supply goes down here. 2,800 meter range repair uh, anti-tank guns. The reason we didn't see these, these are very, very difficult to deal with. The reason we didn't see these earlier is because that pivads went down that road and intercepted it. RM70 volley is going to be going for that Sheridan. So that's a bit of a waste. And yeah, Tiberius and Darix both recognizing now that their only path into the game is to stop this tick here. Um, and I don't think... Right, so NBK and NATO boy have also recognized that, and so they're going to be stacking up the defense. Ten minutes left in the game, plus two to NATO boy and NBK. They're about to take that point lead out, and uh, keep in mind this is game one of potentially three. Labs and Sheridan's going hard. Um, they will eventually go down. There's simply too much here. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on as well. It's like they're using the ATGMs. So they, they really need to put some more guys here. Um, Airborne Dragon coming in, that's a good choice. And uh, yeah, they're trying to push over here. I don't know, maybe they can get the Toto in that high rise, but really they need to deal with the Zikrons. The Sheridan will just slowly kill all of them. Eagle going deep. This isn't very intelligent. The Cub is still up. Oh man. I think he just managed to dodge the range of the Cub though. So is he going to evac or is he just going to fly a pretty path? He's about to run out of fuel. Where's he going? <laughs> Oh, here we go. This is what we spoke about. But the CV gets taken out. Uh, the CV got taken out. It got strafed by the Eagles. So that, that's where this guy was going for. LGBT was brought in as well. They're saving that one for later. Um, and yeah, this, this, was, this was the chance for Red to get back in that zone. And I think they've whiffed it. Because now surely Blue just sends way more stuff. Um, LGBT got hit once. He's, gonna, he's, he's going in hard. He's going in for that T-80 BV. Evax doesn't kill it command zone over here tiberius drives in a bmp2 brdm2 just in a in a fit of uh, desperation and it'll stop the tick temporarily for, and and it's dodging a lot of toes and a lot of atgms but there is one left in this zone nbk left this here so 
um, that only stops it temporarily. It'll keep it stopped for the next 20 seconds. You can tell Red are starting to panic now. They're going full send on here. They know this is the only way into the game. They're not resupplying their stuff. They need to get those grads on the go. NATO boy quite content to actually just start pushing Delta. Second LGBT comes out. That's just going for the infantry. And it gets it. And it gets out. If only Derek had put some cubs here. Do you know what I mean? Because he got this zone for free. So you put them here. And then you just can't use air over here. Uh, Forth does get the cub. He's still trying to attack over here. These guys have zero rounds left. These guys have six. Um, airborne scouts do have the AT4, but once again, these are actually supposed to be going for the middle. It's just the automatic reinforcement room. Derek's trying to get around here. Cluster coming in. What's that going for? Nothing in particular. Uh, over here. Whoa! What is this? Classic war game attack. Smoke first, tank second. C9 against BMP2. The Igla's out of rounds. And with the Bradley helping out, you'd expect the C9 to win that. Um, what? BMP2 wastes the Bradley. <laughs> But yeah, he's in this zone, and there's no CV here, because he just saw the CV drive into his other zone. So th this is rapidly turning into a rout. I do not see Red getting back into this game. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Two CVs coming in here, and a third one coming in here. They know they need some points quick. They're trying to get down here. Airborne scouts are just going to drive past and die again. Um, Mot Shuts and BTR going for the CVs, but they've brought back up CVs. They see it. Maverick's out. Misses. But the CV should get it. Well, actually, if he unloads there, he might actually be able to kill this. Uh, he's loot. Hmm. Not sure what's going on there. Yeah. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. He's going to get side shot. Oh, yeah. there goes half his health. He's got to smoke immediately. Smoke. Smoke, you fool. They know where the CV is. They're going for the artillery. He loses that to the Mott Schutzen. That didn't have to happen. Uh, F-16 goes for the CV on this side and gets it before the SPW can get the CV on this side. Toe from a Humvee, toe misses. F-16 trying to take out the SPW-70 before it gets the CV. Uh, two Mavericks fired, one Maverick hit. Thunderbolt's on the go now. And this is crazy. NBK just absolutely deleting Tiberius while they're trying to focus on this side. NBK not content to just sit there. Another Hail Mary CV down mid. Not sure how long that's going to last. Uh, although it is covered, because the only way you can shoot it is by getting down the main road, so they can't actually see that. But this one has just been fast path forward, we'll see some CV on CV action. Artillery's missing, the Motschutzen are still here. And the Thunderbolt's got the lay of the land. Another CV being brought up here, but with this tank here and this guy, they're not. They're definitely going to see it. NATO boy losing all his units in reinforcements because he's just sending them the wrong way. <laughs> this has happened so many times. This guy's going to go down as well to this. Oh man, losing those airborne. That's 160 points. Then losing that. That's another bunch of points. Uh, Cobra takes out the CV there, NBK saving the day over here, but hey, NATO boy, he's got his zone, and um, he's just got to deal with this now. That stops the tick again, five minutes left on the board. Uh, tank's been sent back and so forwards, not sure if they've noticed this yet, but that's just because it takes ages for the zone to clear. Uh, there's an Igla here, so that might get the Cobra. But this is looking extremely difficult now. Um, they know about this as well for some reason. Somehow, it probably killed something. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I think Blue's got this game, so I can talk a little slower now. <laughs> what a game. Is this actually a 2v2 map? It's classed as a 3v3 one in game. But so are all the other 2v2 maps. LGBT comes out, it's probably gonna get this if the Toad doesn't. Bit of an overkill there, doesn't really matter. This Motshutson's in a really good spot. RM70, try, they're still trying to snipe that CV. I'm very surprised that this, you know, there's not really been an attempt. Okay, there we go. Let's clear that out. But yeah, this game's over, man. NBK, he's going further. He's going further. Thunderbolt. I think he sees this because it's shooting. No, he's lost it. He needs recon. He needs recon. He's just sending in all the damage C9s. So yeah, 11th cabin team game is very, very strong. Thunderbolt's going to start lighting up the Igglers, which will give the Cobras room to act. Takes out that BMP2 as well, that's important. They're trying to find the CV. This guy's coming in. You see how he puts the M113A3 first? So that tanks the first shot. That's very important. You should know about that. Over on this side, yeah, they're killing him. Derek surrenders. Tiberius will follow. And that was game one. 
that was game one. So, um, yeah, what a game. What a game. What a game. NBK playing the game of his life. NATO boy not far behind. Still positive on the KD. And yeah, just Red's decision. Red's decision to just buy seven ASF at the start um, and accomplish nothing with that. Left them with, you know, very little moving forwards. Um, and uh, just also, also a complete outplay in terms of micro. I think NBK's micro with that smoke, the smoke tank combo, the red dragon smoke tank combo, where you you chuck the smoke mortars everywhere. The fact that he was just fast pathing units down everywhere. Some they were all dying, but they were causing so much confusion in the back line, slowing down those reinforcements. Really good game. Really good game. Whoa, my throat hurts. <laughs> Somebody else want to take over? Are those the best players on the ladder? These guys barely play on the ladder. Uh, Tiberius is. Well, let's check the stats. So NBK, rank 164. 13 games. 125 games total. He's a Red Dragon player. He's a Red Dragon player. NATO boy. Oh, it comes up with my profile. That's just me. NATO boy is, is a ranked, ranked enthusiast. Darix, zero ranked games this patch. 915 multiplayer games total. He plays on a lot of alt accounts though, so I'm, I'm pretty sure he's played a lot of ranked games this patch. He's just playing under his alt. Tiberius rank 11. Uh, 69 games this patch. Wii 1500 multiplayer games total. So, uh, yeah. Really, really, really good game. Really good game. Really good game. Um, whoa. What, what a game. The the swings. The swings. I don't know if my voice can hold out for three games. So. <laughs> so, yeah, that was... Uh, I'm going to start speaking a bit quieter now. Put the mic a little bit closer to my face. Maybe that'll make me last a bit longer. So, yeah, the, the ASF purchases at the start. Um, really interesting. Let's check the chat, shall we? While we wait for game two. Actually, let's check the state of game two while we wait for game two. Okay, so let's have a look at the draft. So uh, game two. Tiberius and Darix ban rocks. MBK ban Cyrus and Tiberius and uh, Darix picked Tension. So let's have a look at Tension. Tension is definitely one of the maps of all time. It's uh, It could be described as a NATO favoured map, or at least less of a Pact favoured map. Pact has the advantage, by the way, in this meta. So the fact that NBK and NATO rolled them in game one is actually pretty impressive. Um, so this is tension. It's very dark. Um, makes it harder to cast, but whatever. Um, it, it just sort of looks less good. I think people respond more positively to bright colours, something in human psychology. Anyway. Uh, three mid zones, three mid zones, one back zone, one back zone, two side zones. So the fights end up happening in this big town, because that's where all the points are. And then there may be a bit of side roly roly over here. So that's interesting, isn't it? Uh, what do you think of tension? Let's let somebody else do some speaking. Let's let somebody else do some speaking. Uh... Huel Lamau. Only Darix would be using the machine guns. Yeah, it's an interesting decision. Huh. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Plain spam. Doesn't Tiberius rank her up? Well, uh, this time he got more. Spoke about this. I had to micro a few units so that spread out. Yeah, exactly. The micro from all four players this game was incredible because all four of them were playing the whole map. All four of them were playing the whole map. Thank you. That's very nice of you. Uh, poor air micro by NATO. Maybe, maybe it was more the a AA micro. Those upvetted IHOCs. I'm surprised. You sh I'd prefer three IHOCs, but it looks like he upvetted them and just brought two. And uh, yeah, absolutely mad. Yeah, the spawn routes were pretty m messed up. NATO boy losing a lot of troops just because he was sending them forwards. 
French don't know the key to this map. The middle town is the key. To be honest, that was big, to be honest, having that middle town. Uh, because it made... Uh, let's look at the map, shall we? It was big. Because when they got that middle town there... Uh, where is it? Triple strike. So yeah, it is... No, that's not it. Twin Cities. So... Let's have a look-see. Blue got the middle town. This town. What did that mean? It meant that NBK, when he's trying to fight... So so red is here, right? But blue gets the town. Which means that red loses this forest. Which means that blue can roll this side. Which means that red... Tiberius was constantly sending his units like down here and then across into here. Because blue has the town. So you get a really good flank. Because you got the town. And that helps you win the middle. Blue has the town. What does that mean for India? It means that blue was sending M1A ones all the way up here, <laughs> and just just so 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 these conquerors, which would usually have quite a nice line of sight over here, they just hello, I am here now. I'm blowing that up. Lets you sneak units around to cut the reinforce. So the town helps with India. We also saw blue attack Delta. Not enough smoke scumming. They could have smoked off the CV and kept it in there a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, we also saw blue attack Delta. So by taking the town. Red has to draw this huge line which goes all the way around here. And you saw that. The red CV was here because he can't put it here because uh, because a tank could roll up and kill it. And they got to have defenses here because the town can push out. And over here, blue gets a preferential access and Charlie cuts the main road reinforce, thus forcing red to send his units all the way around the back. So you're right. The town is why he won. Or at least it helped. Uh, hero C knight, God's strongest C knight. <laughs> yeah, the Ihawks didn't move. So if uh, if they just saved one grad volley or one Acacia, I'm not sure about the Gvozdika purchase. I think that's a big mistake. Get an Acacia, it's better. Then they could have killed the Ihawks. Are they in game yet? Attacking while winning. They're not sending their best. Uh, no, I call it the faggot, and if I get demonetized, I get f demonetized. Um, so, Darix, whenever he wins the tournaments, rejects the prize money. Because I used to think the same thing as this. I was like, this isn't on, really. But no, he, he turns down the prize money. So, I think it's pretty based that the guy in charge of balance in the game is one of the best players in the game. I wouldn't have it any other way, really. And the way he stays competitive is by playing these games. Oh, there you go. Somebody said that. If Tiberius and Darix watched the previous game, they would have seen this coming. Fair enough. Tactic hasn't changed. If it works, it works, yeah. Juliet shows the weakness of playing the whole map. Yeah. I'm glad you enjoyed the match, guys. I just wish my voice could hold out a bit longer. Not sure what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm going to be like whispering to T-Man. Going to nerf the lav. <laughs> 11 ACR. <laughs> no, so, yeah, they didn't push the Hawks all game. This is extremely important. Those IHawks got so many kills, dude. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the mortar tank smoke was really good. You missed the game. Oh, I just rewind. Just rewind. Oh yeah, don't worry, T man. You'd know about it if I was. Uh, <laughs> I would. I would just forget. <laughs> I would just forget to remind you. Right, lobby's up. Draft, 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 draft. So, from the maps, um, basically, got some uh, fourth and seventy nine Y. Oh, that's for game one. Right. Game 2, NBK, bans, and NATO boy, ban, 82nd, US Airborne, and 2nd, UK Infantry. Oh, he edited it, because he must have said 2nd Infantry first. They picked 2nd Panzer Grenon 1st UK into 39Y and 27Y. Whoa. <laughs> this is going to be a good one. 1st UK. Derek's on 1st UK. Or maybe he'll be on 2nd Panzer Grenon. 
And what's the map? It's Enchin. It's not a bad map for the first UK. And to be honest, Pact is going to struggle in the town against second Panzergren and against uh, against first UK in the town. Pact will struggle because their infantry is not as good. But it, that open point spoke about this, didn't we? That open point on tension. What's the current score? It is 1-0 NBK and NATO boy. Uh, go back and watch that game if, you, if you've got the time. That was a really good game. So NBK and NATO boy picked NATO and won. <laughs> which which is very interesting but Derek's went fourth march Hudson, which I don't really agree with all his helicopters got blown up to Avenger Paras so we're on tension and uh, yeah this open point NATO are really going to struggle to defend this open point because the T-80BVs are going to come rolling and there's nowhere to hide you know you get some ATGMs in these he pushes you out your fallback position's here and here. You could literally just roll down mid. and <laughs> So I think... Uh, I think Darix and Tiberius are going to focus heavily on the town. And the early game is theirs. The early game is theirs for the taking. Because they get the forward deployed in first. They get the forward deployed in second pentagram. And NBK and NATO boy don't get forward deployed between them. You get Razvedka Saperi with recon deployment. So that's going to be a really interesting game. What do you guys think? Uh, what do you guys think? How many people are watching? 105. Wow. Thank you all. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And yeah, Milan's, Milan's in the open. Yeah, so I reckon... Uh... <coughs> Apologies, I'll edit that part out. Um... Let's talk about this. Yeah. I reckon Pact's going to win in the open, but NATO's going to be going hard in the town. I reckon at the start, they'll be going all in on the town. And I actually don't agree with these picks from Pact. 39Y and 27Y on this map, when all the points are in the town. You reckon the French are going to win? And then they're going to get Pact for game two? Game three? Might have to get a co-caster on or something. I uh, just hope my voice is okay tomorrow, because that's when i got to perform, right? Um, laser Acacia yeah but the point is that at the start there's the forward deployed because you look look at how close these points are together these two particularly NATO will take this uh, NATO will take both of these at the start and then they'll stock it full of javelins and the packed infantry ain't great so the micro's got to be on point threading the needle between those buildings against 750 meter range low 80s it's uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for Pact. But, but, here's something we've not mentioned yet. Pact gets the Grads and the Uruguns. And these zones are like two meters wide. Like two Uruguns volleys, one there, one there. That's my zone now. Two Uruguns volleys, one there, one there. That's my zone now. Two Uruguns volleys, one there, one there. My zone. One Uruguns volley there. <laughs> That's my zone. Uruguns there, Uruguns there. Jurgen there, Jurgen there, and maybe one at the back. So, these small zones, it's going to be pretty, pretty, pretty rough for NATO to keep infantry in those zones against the Grads, against the Jurgens. It's going to be pretty tough. So, we'll see. We'll see about that. Are they in game yet? Yes, they are. They're in lobby. And keep in mind that we have to have a five minute wait. So... While we wait, while we wait, um, while we wait, I am going to go and put on some background things. Uh, I put on. Let's put on some background videos while we wait. Uh, let's have a look at... Hello, and welcome. Alright, so that's the deck build. Gazelle Rock. That's the deck build. Right, 
Right, so here I am playing on the new Bernadotte patch, and I'm playing as the new and unimproved 2nd UK Infantry Division. And I'm up against a wooden box playing a 7th Panzer, which to my knowledge hasn't really been changed. Um, and we're on Two Lakes Duel, which is not my favourite map. Very difficult map to use my air mobile. Okay, apparently 7th has been changed. What has been changed? T oh yes, of course. Completely forgot about that. Seventh was actually nerfed because it lost all its T fifty fives. This war will be over by Christmas. It lost its T fifty five AM twos, but it has base T fifty fives and more T seventy twos. So maybe it was actually a buff because I, I think the T seventy two is better. And yes, mot shots are now ten per card. So yeah, overall buffs buffs to seventh Panzer, uh, which I guess it needed it, and uh, big nerfs to second UK, uh, which didn't need it. You hate to see it, but I've been I've been accused of complaining too much. Oops, what happened there? And yes, you now get the Faggot M. Uh, which is interesting to say the least. But he will struggle in the early game against my super cool rush. Because he only gets Spezial Aufklärer. The only issue is that he might... He, I'm on the bad side of the map. He can actually get to Oscar pretty fast. So we're going to have to sadly spend two... Very, very expensive SAS. <laughs> Get into there. Oh, no, but he gets there first. Oh, yeah, so it's, it's a big problem. It's a big problem. The This side of the map is just weaker than the other one, but it is what it is. And we're going to really struggle against the T-72s, which are basically about the same as the Challenger and 70 points uh, cheaper. So... I really want a Zerg Rush Zulu. Really bad map for me, to be honest. If it was a nice open map, I could use the Lynx Rockets more, but it's not. It's quite a small one, so... It's a difficult map to play, because I'm, I'm conscious that if I just YOLO into Zulu, I'll lose Oscar. And he probably expects me to YOLO into Zulu. So it's a bad idea, and I want to use the new M270 MLRS, which the Brits now get. So... That would be cool. Um, but yeah, we'll really struggle against his tanks, I think. I think the, the late game is his to win. Uh, and he likes to play with sending stuff around the sides and stuff as well. It's very difficult. I think I might just YOLO into Zulu and, uh, and just lose and then blame my division. It could be done. It could be done. Or I could go for X-Ray uh, at like 10 minutes or something with all the Lynxes. I wish I wasn't on this map. <laughs> um, let's have a thing. Yeah, I think rushing Zulu is just going to be a bad idea because I think he will just uh, he will rush Oscar and then I'll lose Oscar. But let's do it anyway because I don't really have anything better to do today than throw. So we'll be. I accidentally bought one set of SAS in the Bedfords and one in the Saxons, and I'm not ready at all. Oh, damn it. One minute. I'm not ready at all. So yeah, you, you don't really get a lot of SS at the start now. For and I am we'll a bit concerned next. about the... Special Aufklärer. And I'm a bit concerned about him rushing down Oscar. Yes, sir. Which I actually think is what he'll do. We'll I think he'll, uh, he'll let me have this, and then he'll go for this. So I need to hedge my bets, which is need a raid? less than ideal. And I wish I was on the other side. I could buy CVs later. No, I, I mean, because then I'll be at a, like a plus six disadvantage if I don't buy the CVs. So kind of need to buy them. And yeah, the, the rocket guys aren't going to get there particularly fast. And then he'll flank me. Yeah, I think rushing Zulu is a terrible idea. And instead, I should secure Oscar. So that's what I'm going to do. And Ready to transport. I really wish I'd brought these guys in the Saxons. So we will not rush. Extra, I think sir. he'll expect us to do that. And something else I need to do is secure all my sides and stuff, because he constantly attacks me around the back every single game. So we'll do that at like minute one. We don't have to do it immediately. So we'll just take Oscar, get the early CVs, and then try and play an attrition game into 7th, which which will be tough, but 
we'll see what we can do. Uh, what else do I want over here? If he's going to rush me. Wait, he doesn't get good rush options. I think it'll be just like a slow roll T72 attack, if I'm being entirely honest. And he'll back it up with decent air. So we need at least one of these for when I lose the SAS. <laughs> hmm. So, get some, like a fox round here. Yeah, I need that, to be honest, because he'll send BRDM2s around the sides. Get fox round here. Get another Milan 2. Need a raid? So this is where I regret upvetting them. So yeah, I want to secure my borders. He might attack me in Lima. This is the other thing. I am listening, Captain. Uh, so we'll just get SAS to, to here. Taxi. And yes, sir. one here. And one for enemy here. Planes. And then just pad that out with some terriers. In case he does attack us there. Oh. Can't get a lot of terriers. Can't get a lot of terriers. It's difficult. I guess I'm playing too reactionary. Not being proactive enough. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be really quite defensive on this side. But yeah, I don't. I, as you can see, the, the point increases really do hurt you. You don't get a lot off the start now. You don't get a lot at the start at all. So I'm going to buy a supply for the right side. I just don't know where the hammer will fall. Thanks for waiting. Always thank your opponent for waiting. And let's just wait for the game to start. I'd like to take this time to thank the generous channel joiners who generously join the channel and they get the names on the screen. They get the videos up to a week early. They get members only exclusive videos of which there are now an extremely large number. Uh, a very large number. And uh, that goes up every week. But mainly it's, it's about helping me out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, a way to support the channel. One membership for one month at the lowest tier is worth 2,000 video views. So it's it's very useful uh, for me. I am listening, Captain. Uh, simply because advertising revenue isn't particularly fantastic. So, playing a nice listening, slow Captain. game today. Nice slow game today. And uh, yeah, we still got one SS left. So we'll get this we guy orders, all the way around to here. Right, that's been five minutes. They asked for a five minute delay, you see. So, oh, I've just been running it. Uh, okay, well, we'll get to the end of the deployment, and then we'll do the deployment, and then it'll be five minutes. Surely. <clears throat> because that was seven minutes, plus the internal two-minute delay. It's like at least seven minutes. USSR flag. <laughs> what does he mean by that? <laughs> like, he's he's written NBK. <laughs> That this means he's typed it right. He's literally typed USSR and BK on the map. <laughs> so, <laughs> just write your name. <laughs> it's not like we don't know who's in the game. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. But yeah, we're just trying to get to the end of the deployment. And then we'll speak about the deployment. And then it'll be way more than five minutes delay, and then they won't get upset because both teams asked for a five minutes delay. Or at least both teams agreed to a five minutes delay. And the internal delay is also two minutes, so it'll be a seven minutes delay. And then they really don't have anything to complain about. And you can tell that... Oh, I see. Oh, I... is this live? Oh, okay. So we actually do have to wait five minutes. <clears throat> we have to wait five minutes uh, once the deployment ends. So we'll wait for the deployment to end. And then I will cover the deployment. That will take five minutes. And then we'll start, and it'll be a five-minute delay. But in the meantime, they could accuse me of giving away the deployment. So I guess we'll just go back to watching this. And we just got to watch out for his rear line action, because he there's lots of space here for him to do wacky things and me to not notice. Lots of space. So I am going to buy some recon. Actually, I, I want to play Heli Attack 2. Uh, so, <laughs> right, so everything started, so now we wait five minutes. Now we wait five minutes. Then there'll be a five minute delay. So that means I get five minutes to uh, share with you something I've been working on. Uh, this is the bracket, by the way, as it stands. These are the semi final teams me and T Man versus Menkar and Stanag. 
Stanag's been substituted by Guard Exrams. And this is the other one. Darix and Tiberius versus NBK and NATO Boy. It's been a long time coming here. I wish I had more time, because if I did, I could have made like a teaser trailer of like people winning various games and stuff. I just, I, I always have more time. I always have more ideas than I have time. But in the meantime, I'd like to share with you something while we wait five minutes. I've set my timer, so we'll know how long five minutes is. Uh, and then we can cover the deployments, and then we can uh, start the game. So, where is it? Where is it? It's called a super secret video. Uh, secret. Where the hell is it? Can't find it. How are you guys, anyway, while we wait? No, nope, that's still not working. I want to gauge your reaction to something. A secret. There we go. Can you guys see that? Uh, I've noticed nobody's typed anything in the last, like, minute. I guess you're all waiting, as I am. Anyway, uh, I'll put this on, and I'll let, let, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. No, hang on, this is last year's. Uh, yeah, okay, so... Cut that. Uh... Where is it? Right, so I get to, get to that part. No, I remember this from last year. Right. Enjoy the video. Halo. My name is Lego Prime Minister. And I'm writing to you because I need your help. England has fallen. The trains don't run on time anymore, and no one can afford to buy a ticket. But there is a solution. What if I told you that magic is real, and the wizards hoard their power while our children starve, unable to even afford a Kit Kat from the onboard catering services? I need you to board the LEGO Hogwarts Express and steal its power source for England. But it won't be easy. You'll have to face the 4,268 possible combinations of fully destroyable children, armed with 16 unique weapons. You'll face Dementors and who knows what else. Then you'll have to fight two multi-stage boss battles against LEGO Hagrid and the LEGO Lunch Trolley Lady. Once you've done all that, you'll have to escape along the top of the train using the fully destroyable LEGO Warthog. I guess what I'm trying to say is... Oi mate, you got a license for that LEGO Harry Potter and the cancelled seat reservation for the super off-peak return ticket to Bradford Interchange. Right, so that was the intermission, and now it's definitely been five minutes. We could close all this and actually get on with the game, cast the deployments. So here we've got uh, NBK saying NBK, and he's definitely NBK and all over the place with uh, 39Y. And it looks like he's taking the left, so no split deployment this time. Although, actually, yeah, there is a split deployment this time. He's taking the left and the right. Interesting decision making from these players. And he's up with NATO boy playing 27Y. So it looks like these guys are going to be going uh, sort of all over the place. So BRDM2s, that's just going straight down there. Rovermland Para will intercept that. Uh, Rovermland Para is here. Much less Vedka here. I'm quite surprised by Red's decision to not YOLO Bravo. I thought they would YOLO Bravo with their, their strong advantage, but it looks like they really want Delta. So lots of stuff going to Delta. Fob purchased. Is there a fob on the other side? No. So that, yeah, you can expect to see some MLRS. And, um, yeah, so the, the we got Igloos going here. To be honest, I don't think these guys are ever going to make it if there's forward deployment coming the other way. Like, look, they're unloaded in the middle of the road. They clearly don't expect to be able to make it. T-80BV off the start. Rocket Heli off the start. Second Rocket Heli over here. And a Tor. Somebody brought the Tor. Don't know if these guys have used that. It's useless. It doesn't work properly. It's literally bugged. Um, it just does not seem to hit half its shots. Two tours purchased. Oh dear. <laughs> and yeah, they're just yoloing straight down mid. Uh, well, I say they're defending heavy on mid. They're expecting resistance. 
I do love how they're willing to just send these units. I need to stop saying YOLO. It's been five minutes now. Um, it's been way more than five minutes, so I only started that timer, right? Strella back here. So yeah, lots of infantry and BMP2s, most Dracumetis. They're trying to get to the middle. Going to NATO's deployment, we got Pararothomalans here. We got uh, Pararothomalans here. <laughs> A regular Paramalans here. It's very defensive on Bravo. Spartan Zibi here with the exceptional optics. That'll be able to see quite far. Javelin Lamaus. These get nerfed in the upcoming patch and can no longer go in buildings. Uh, who is this? Okay, so it's Tiberius putting them in buildings. So it's not Derek's doing that. And we will get rid of the text that says... Uh, whoops. And we will... There we go. In mid... Like I said, big push for at least one of these middle zones. Looks like they're going for Echo. So, oh, Terrier Paris. Oh, they're actually starting in their own zone. They're not going YOLO, which I completely disagree with, actually. Oh, they're not They're not going YOLO. They're just forsaking their forward deployment. They get, they get both, both NATO players get massive forward deployment. I say massive, sizable forward deployment. And both packed players do not. They just get spits as rest of Edgar. And instead of trying to take Echo, they're actually, they're just going to hold. So Gazelle Rockets, Warrior Milans, they're trying to stop a rush, but you're not the one that's going to be rushed. All these FS Jaeger just playing t defensive, not even, not even going to the halfway point. That's really interesting, really interesting. Gepard to there, uh, Recoilless Rifle to this building. No. Oh, I see, this is a church. I just didn't notice because of how dark it was. Uh, so yeah, religious people can see further than atheists. You see, an atheist can only see this far. Um, and a religious person can see this far. So that's why he's taking it to the church. It's a good place for it. Great, and now we can start the game. And it is live, as you can see. Mistaking which players are on which side. My apologies. Tiberi well, you got this up here. So you can see blue team, red team. Derek's opening him with his classic ASFs. He's he spotted the helicopters with the power of sound, and he's just going to one pass that helicopter. Helicopter did not spot anything with the power of sound, so that's just going to die. Tor's on like fast move or something, so there goes a the helicopter. Oh, the Tor actually hit. Whoa. Eugen, Tor fixed now. But that was still a good trade for Derek's because those are for availability, and he got a helicopter. But there's a second one. So it's still not good for him. Uh, Javelin Lamaus ain't far behind. Gazelle goes down. Rockets unloading on the Terrier Paras. You hate to see it. Whoops. You hate to see it. <laughs> hate to see anything. <laughs> I think I might have to turn the game volume down. Uh, can you guys hear okay? Can you hear me? Can I move the Live Leak logo? Oh, flip. That's, that's not going to be easy to do. Because um, that's on a separate... Actually, I can just pause it, can't I? Right, okay, I will now fix the lively cloak. <laughs> I'm just fixing the lively logo, guys. This is the production quality all of you came for. All there's probably only about twenty people watching this, so it doesn't matter. Uh hundred and one, okay. Uh I'm just fixing it guys, don't worry about it. <laughs> just fixing it, just hiding that live leak logo. Uh where is there we go, save. Is it gone? It's gone. And so is all the chat. Uh, and then we'll get back into the game. Sorry about that, guys. Really good production quality from the Hippler, as they call me. There you go. Two more planes coming out for the MI-24. Um, you know, I really disagree with this gameplay. You see the Tor just completely shoots off into space. That's what we were talking about. And the second one sort of hits it and doesn't do anything, so both of these guys get out. Uh, I really disagree with this gameplay, just suiciding jets into helicopters and killing them. I, th I think it's kind of dumb. Um, but hey, uh, <laughs> that's that's the game. TABV is going to start eating up these warrior malads. They're not going to live very long. Let let me know if you uh, if you think that the uh, the game's too loud. Was this stream made in France? Can you put the live leak logo back? <laughs> You gotta pay. You gotta pay money if you want the live leak logo. This Conkers is missing a lot, and these recoilless rifles are actually doing a lot of work. Um, just shooting anybody that comes across. That Igla's getting eaten up. Lots of smoke out. So they are going for a, a, 
an early game push. Where's that CV? NATO boy and Derek's on a plus two. Literally nothing over here. This is going to go for that BMP2. Cluster coming in. This is going to be big. Oh, he went for the tank. NATO boy is reversing. Oh, he gets out. He gets out. Uh, do you think it's too loud? Can you hear me? Can you hear me when I zoom in like this? Because I can't hear myself. But that doesn't matter too much as long as you guys can hear me. No, because obviously I know what I'm saying. Because <laughs> I'm me. Uh, but yeah, these M40s may be not a good purchase, actually, because the BMP2s outrange them. Um, I did try something similar when I played on this map. I bought SPG9s. And they're good against the infantry, but they don't shoot the tanks. You're welcome, you're welcome. Uh, this guy's trying to... Mm, that's not looking very juicy. This guy has a Panzerfaust 3. NBK playing it. Playing it uh, close here. Uh, like, is that going to cap? No, it's not. So that, that was just sort of a waste of time. So yeah, blue does have the early game advantage. To the surprise of no one. Oh my god, a Lars. <laughs> Where is Fart Jenkins? He told me that the Lars wasn't so bad. Or was it Fart Joke? I think that might actually be a different person. Um, and yeah, you see the arm rifles. Uh, they get so far and then here comes the fire support. Just starts hitting them and then they need to get back so they need some support here but Darix is uh, Darix and Tiberius are about to be winning BRDM2 is going to get down here this has been injured so that BRDM2 from before came down here and got shot I think Pact can really just play it quite safe here I'm surprised they've not bought a grad Scimitar to here is actually really powerful I wonder if he could get it back and I don't know I guess that's what that's for Warrior Milan's dying, and the BMP3 will eat the Rover Milan, but the Hell Arm hits the- Whoa! That's a big kill, actually, because that's not cheap. That is- the BMP3 is not cheap. Uh, but overall, I think that was a positive trade for Pact there. And yeah, they're, they're pushing in. This guy hasn't been sent up. Would love to see some smoke. Get a mortar for smoke, smoke this corner, walk him in. I mean, you've got he you've got up to here, you're covered. But these guys are quite conservative players. Uh, NATO boy pinging NBK. Hi, mate. You got a BMP2 back here. And Derek's building up for a push here. You see that he's left them all in the transports. Oh, no, he hasn't. He's just deployed them. If he went down here, he would win. There's only one Saperi RPO there against, what, four Zikarunks and a Scimitar. <laughs> Um, but yeah, over here, NATO boy just needs to get this in, but he's he's worried about this infantry here. Uh, he just needs to drive for us just a little bit. Is that corner smoke or is that... No, that was smoke from the vehicle. Uh, Lars opening up again. Where's it going? It's going for the BTR-60 PBs. And it's doing literally nothing, because it does literally nothing. Even Stevens now. But there we go, FS Jaeger moved up, but now there's a BMP-2 here. And there wasn't before. So that'll give him a plus two for a little bit. This guy's getting... Oh, no. That was... Ah, that's mad. He's got a smoke. Will he have time? I don't think he's going to do it. He's going to die. No. Okay, misses. He's got a second there. And then he smokes. So... <laughs> Saved by the bell. Scimitar came around the side. BMP2 should eat that for breakfast. But I don't think... No, he has reacted. Zikrung's down mid. NATO's going to get this town. Grad finally purchased. Cluster going for that T80. This one's going to die. There's no way that survives. So that goes down. BTR 60 back up here. But NATO's got control of this game. Really good map for NATO. Molding MiG probably going to go down to this tornado cluster. Just off the guns. Tor out of rounds. So it can't reciprocate. Uh, okay, that... Oh, the, the, the Fuhrer died. So the Fuhrer died to the... Because, yeah, this is a very powerful angle. Just getting people to here and then you can shoot down this whole mid thing. Uh, the Grad beats the Lars by a lot. And, uh, yeah, NATO have managed to get into here. So the spread impact's pretty thin here. Um, Gap, Gap is up there as well. <coughs> Derek's going to buff the Lars after this. I only understand farts. So... So oh, Fart Joke and Fart Jenkins are different people. <laughs> well, that solves that conundrum. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And then, yeah, so Red's back in here. NBK gets in, and they've got up the Igglers, so you can't be sending forwards those build cars anymore. Lars fires a lot. I guess that's the advantage, that it fires a lot. But you see that it does literally nothing. You can't even tell it's happening. Nothing has occurred. Nothing has occurred. 
And keep in mind that NATO have the better early game and Pact has the better late game, so they got to make something happen here. This Fuhrer's walking it. Uh, no transports for him, but yeah, there's more sending down here from Derek's. And NATO boy and NBK are both on this side. Um, the grad, they're just firing it from next to the fob. Hello? <laughs> Semi-final gameplay? High-level gameplay? <laughs> um, and yeah, Lathan's and Int also did that, because NATO doesn't really get a lot of uh, MLRS, so... You probably, you know, uh, well, I guess they get the Lars. If he Lars that, he might hit the fob, I don't know. That Igla's still going for that Gazelle rocket. This guy's got to get back. You see that the Challenger can't really, uh, the Challenger can't really fight the TABV. Just ignore what you said, that you saw there. And over here, NBK's managed to get around the side here. And once the BMP2 start opening up these Zikrungs, they're not going to live very long because they don't have AT. So these guys are coming in, this guy needs to be moved up, TAUBV purchases, NATO need to keep up the pressure, they need to get somebody in this zone, I mean, the fact of the matter is, if you let these two heavy tank divisions, 27Y, 39Y, if you let them build up, if you give them an inch of breathing room, they just turn around and roll you, <laughs> um, as, as I know from permanent uh, personal experience. The Fuhrer died, did you tell the Germans? The Lars eats up more points in supply than it costs. It might do, actually. Yeah, 155. We saw two there before. 720 per volley. So that's 20 points. That's uh, 35 points per volley, roughly. No, it's not. It's, seven, uh, hmm. it's 30 points per volley. And, uh, yeah, it's fired. If, if it fires more than four volleys, then, yeah, you're right. And, yeah, we're seeing the smoke scum. Love to see it. Grad's coming out now. And, uh, yeah, just waiting for those TABVs to start piling up. Fiora's finally getting in here. Not sure why this... Oh, because of the FS Jäger. There's no recon here, so they don't see him. Uh, I would have preferred the grad to go here, actually. This would be a nice place to grad. So Derek's doing a good job here, and he's backing it up with his signature. Signature four Leopard 1A ones at, at 2 vet. So this is... <laughs> I can't talk too much about it, because of where he told me it, but... He certainly likes his four Leopard 1A1A1s at 2-Vet. <laughs> he seems to think Leopard 1A1s are really good, because you can bring him at 2-Vet like this. So we'll see how much work that does. Lars doing a little bit of cohesion damage here, but not, but in reality doing actually nothing. And uh, yeah, we'll see how the Leopard 1s do. They, they should clean up the BMP2s, but if the TABV gets a bead on them, then goodbye. Uh, I would love to see the grad open up on here, though. I mean, it's... it Ah, oh, that was taken out of the zone. Tiberius and Derek's on a very comfortable lead. Nothing happening over here. Um, Jaguar Cluster is going for the TAEBVK. Nay, oh boy, he's got to be careful. It's a high altitude bomber, mate, so just go backwards and then go forwards. Right, now go forwards. Yeah, but it's in a line, so you got to go to the left or the right. <laughs> there we go. Perfect survival. And this gets out because they need more AA. Uh, that's going for the TABB of NBK. He's just reversing instead of turning. So he'll eat a bit of that. The the tornadoes drop in a line. They drop in a line like this, right? Like a like a box kind of shape. And so that's how you roll it. Um, grad. Still just a single grad. Still shooting over there and not over here. NBK is having a real big problem here, actually. It's, gonna be, it's getting increasingly difficult for him to do anything about this. He needs to grad, he needs to grad that infantry down. Because, yeah, the Bopars keep hitting the T-80 BBs. I actually... <laughs> starting to get a bit worried now for Pact. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, over here, NATO boy, I think he's trading quite badly because there just seems to be a lot more blue than there is red. This Conkers has done a lot of work, though. But so has this Milan. Um, and, yeah, now he's smoking there, apparently. Uh, but there's no infantry here, and the NATO infantry is better. Because Soviets, they just don't get spammy infantry. Which is, is kind of strange, um, at least from a Western point of view. So, a much slower game than last game. I'm reinstalling Warno, the game is too good. <laughs> oh, at least I'm... Uh, people but yeah one leopard 1a1 down i'm pretty sure they die in one hit to these <laughs> at that range i'm pretty sure they do but yeah nato uh, nbk is having a really rough time here and nato boy just keeps gradding over here which he doesn't really have to do i really think they need to fix this i really think they should be gradding this but there you go aa's up 
Conker's being unloaded, but th there's a lot of infantry here. And you'll note that Derek's is spreading it out. And we got Warrior Milans up to here, and they can very, very easily get into this zone. There's nobody there. Uh, two Lars out for Derek's now, and they're hitting the back of NBK's zone. Uh, Conker's, so, okay, so it doesn't one-shot it, two shots it. But you see that even this unarmed transport survived that volley. And the, the BV's just sitting there like it doesn't even matter. This guy's just left the zone, hasn't he? No, he hasn't. He sat in the smoke, which isn't a good idea because the enemy surely would shoot at the smoke. Uh, NATO boy still just chipping away here, but Tiberius is, is just unloading lots. So it just all comes down to the micro. We got counter smoke out from Tiberius. I think. He's smoking his own unit. Okay, NATO boy trying to copy NBK's smoke strat. <laughs> um, it's looking pretty rough, actually, for, for Pact here. It's looking pretty rough. They haven't played to their advantages. They just didn't bother attacking over here, which is where they've got the advantage. And all this time, NATO's on a plus two, and I'm pretty sure they're trading better as well. Up vet the Grad fires super fast. Darex will nerf Grad. Artillery is not allowed to kill units. Challenger Mark III went down here. Sorry I missed that. But basically the Challenger Mark III costs more than the TABV and it's just worse in every way. Uh, you see that the Challengers really can't stand up to the TABVs. Late game, um, the, he's going to have a bailed out crit. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. So in 20 seconds, this smoke's going to fade and this man will explode. But Tornado Cluster out, and he's got a perfect line on all these tanks. Oh, this is going to be juicy. And it kills none of them. And it dies. But this guy is now very low, so he might get hit by the bailed out challenger. Harrier GR1 coming to confirm the kill. Harrier GR3, sorry. He might get it. No, it didn't drop its bombs, did it? No, it dropped early. Okay. Um, yeah, NBK still trying to get some happening here. Once this smoke fades, he'll get that leopard. I think he'll get the next one as well, actually. Um, but yeah, these Jaeger are very difficult to shift. Very high HP squads. And you can't really use your fire support because there's so many buildings. You can't really see them. There goes that leopard one. There goes that leopard one. And over here, Darics and Tiberius, they did try and get in here. I saw like three Warrior Milans here. I'm not sure what the hell happened to them. They were here before. Lots of blue dying right now. Challengers just cannot stand up to T-80BVs. I really, really hope blue loses this because um, Derek seems to think UKOP and uh, we need to prove him otherwise. This Milan 2 has done so much work. Um, I would love to see NATO boy actually deal with it. <laughs> Instead of just constantly tanking Milan 2 shots. Over here, is this a better angle so we can see both zones at once? Is that better, I guess? Over here, NBK is starting to make some ground. I just wish that um, NATO boy just spotted him a grad. Just spot, spot me a grad volley, bro. Just give me a grad volley here. That'd be perfect. These Jaegers are getting round, and this is going to cause... If they get to this building, it's going to cause a serious problem with those 675 meter ATs, because I'm pretty sure you'd be able to shoot to here. And I'm loving how there's not a single recon helicopter in this whole game. Right, another tornado bot. I don't know about this. Right. Uh, did it even drop? It didn't even drop! And down it goes, down it goes. Finally some fighters out. Uh, and this thing has just done so much work. Lars firing. I wish, can I put these on a hotkey? No, I can't. I did control one though. It doesn't work if you're a spectator. Where are they going? They're going over here. They don't really do anything. Um, Molding MIG goes for the bow and misses. Quite surprising actually. Um, this might actually die. No, he sent it out of the zone. So they're gonna be on a plus four now. Act, man, you got you've got time, but not that much time. <laughs> you don't have that much time. BTR60 PBK dies to the Lars. So that is bad for red. And the TABVs are dying because they're not being repaired. Really just superior micro from the blue players with these tanks. Like that guy didn't make it. Uh, not sure what's going on there. Oh, oh, we can see that. Okay. And this is a blue zone now. Just, I'm really surprised that they just haven't used their their rocket arty advantage. Like, why didn't they rocket arty this? Why not? Why not? 
Lots of infantry here, but they can't really get there. They need to deal with this leopard too. So he's now getting dealt. We, oh, he smoked. Okay. It's like, where's, where are those ATGMs going? I'll probably go down to the... Yeah, these bows back here are really frustrating. So the Igler's been brought up. I think he can actually shoot now. Because he's going to hit this as well. And then that's got a back. Got a smoke and back. Additional time lost. T80BV goes down. Maybe the bow killed it. Igler's still shooting. Uh, it's just missing a lot, I guess. And the Jaeger beat the beat the seven men motor strokey squads. I could hear guns. Tornado gets the MI-24V rocket. I really do think that um, these guys should focus on this. Uh, more Lars coming in. Lars is going to get the Saperi. One bow goes down, but there's another one. And they're really useful to just leave behind the fighting because the enemy's forced to bring up his AA or take three hits. That Leopard 2 is going to get out. FS Jaeger is going to clean up these BMP2s in a second. This isn't looking good. Down goes one. Second one's protected by the building there. Finally, some strike aircraft from Pact. Oh no, he pulled it off. He had it on the right building. He changed his mind. Ah, that, that's a shame. Um, Tornado IDS HE being used as an ASF dies. Definitely a decision. <laughs> right, finally. Oh, that's another NATO boy grad. So that'll also be going over here. And I, I love how they're just constantly. Okay, so did that drop? Where did it go? It went there. Okay. So it missed and it died. So the, NATO are losing planes and so they can't keep up this momentum but they're on a plus two and there's only 21 minutes left in the game. So maybe they could keep it up long enough. And yeah, NATO boy keeps using his tanks when they're on like 3 HP and then losing them. <laughs> um, I don't know, it's, it's not looking good for Pact. Even if they do manage to force them out, like once again, the grads are just still firing on that middle zone. They should really be focused over here. But the fire support is starting to open up on this infantry now. The Führer has revealed himself to the Saperi RPO. So you need to get these rounds to here. At which point the Milan 2 might shoot him. No, it can't. Jaguar 2 could shoot him. What? That's a nice LOS, isn't it? it says it can't see it. <laughs> Lars going in again. So once again, just shoot in the back of the zone. I mean, it's gonna, he, see, he knows exactly where it is. I don't know why. Might be from this. Maybe it will kill it. You need a tank line, really. I'll get an infantry one in this building. Um, and yeah, the Milan 2, they, they just keep killing the BMP2s. So it's very difficult to do anything about that. Over here, Red has been pushed out of this zone because he keeps attacking into this and he's just losing all his guys i mean he's got he's got plenty of low hp t80 bvs three more warrior milans over here tiberius and finally the fuhrer has been targeted oh wait because he disappeared they've stopped shooting ah. two gonna beat the metis seed comes out hits a tor and uh yeah then it gets taken out by iglers and the molding mig Holding MiG-23, but now Tiberius is going for here, and there's nothing here. There's nothing here. Um, so, you know, that's going to be tough. I mean, this guy's about to get pushed out, but it doesn't matter because they're about to get another zone. It's really weird that these grads, like, they're not even firing. It's very odd. It's very odd decision-making. And he just keeps hitting this, like... Needs to be a bit more team play here. Get get a you know sort this out, then hit this. There's no need to just constantly hit these infantry. They're just sat there. They're not really doing anything. Um, so the grads sort of being wasted here, and th then this is going to be plus many to uh, to Tiberius, and he smokes just outside of the zone. This guy evax. Oh, and then he goes into the zone. Okay. Uh, what's that going to go for? It misses. The LGBT evax. So now that's another plus two. <laughs> it's going to be a plus four in a second because there's no CV here. And yeah, this is a NATO victory. As far as I'm concerned, it is live. I mean, so it's all to play for. But yeah, four Lars. <laughs> uh, it's constantly hitting that zone. Um, and the FS Fuhrer is back in. Plus six now. Yeah, I think, uh, I think this is a packed route. Packed route. I wouldn't have picked two heavy tank divisions for this map. I would have picked 
uh, well, Groper's got banned, so you could pick 35Y, which ain't that. So I would have picked fourth March shots. So look at this Hail Mary with the T80 BBs. They're going to eat some shots. Shy shots. Some shy shots. And uh, they're, they're, yeah, they get. What the flip happened to that? Uh, these, this isn't going very well. <laughs> I'm not sure about it. Not the sure what the hell was going on there. That was a bit of a panic play. Um, but yeah, I think the KD is going to be very telling because there's really not a whole lot of red and there's plenty of blue. Um, yeah, I do, I do say. So that guy's about to get side shot and then killed. And yeah, this is game, man. There's no way they pull this back. So we're going to be going to game three. Woohoo. Not using the grads. Yeah, and he used them a bit, but he used them in the wrong places. Like he was using them for normal damage and not uh, other damage. So you see Derek's playing the game of his life. I want to see how many kills those Lars got. Uh, yeah, that was uh, that was an interesting game. Just packs not really using their advantages. It's very difficult to on that map. Like they should have gone for the open sides instead of trying to attack in the town constantly. UK weak. Yeah, the UK is the weakest division. Um, first UK is called first UK because it's the first weakest division. But yeah, the inability of pack to use helicopters because they just get strafed by jets is, is difficult. Interesting, interesting. So it's going to be... Uh, where's that Lars? I'm looking for Lars kills. Is he a grad kill? So did anybody spot any Lars kills? There you go, Lars kill. Got a motor strokey. Interesting, interesting. So now I need to check my Discord messages because I've received six messages. Uh, right, so we're on to a game three, and Tiberius has uh, Tiberius and Derek's have picked Pact as you would expect because Pact has the advantage, and the map that is going to be played is going to be Hesse. Packed on Hesse. Whoa. Difficult. Very difficult to play packed on Hesse. It's not going to be easy. I've seen four Lars kills. Yeah, fair enough. Maybe they do do some... I mean, to be honest, in 1v1, you, you probably just lose. But on a map like that, four Lars, it can work. Um, yeah, it's not looking up. For NATO boy and NBK, that game, they looked very weak, very weak. The micro wasn't as good, and uh, the game strategy was very poor. They rolled heavy two heavy tank divisions into a town. They just didn't bother playing the open side. They could have just taken the open side. Uh, the grads were not being used in the right places. Like He was just using them against the zone in front of him, whereas he could have been using it in the zone that they, they were losing. <laughs> And uh, that could have helped. So yeah, very difficult. Very difficult. Strategic misplay. Where can you see their decks? Uh, after the game, they will upload the replays. And then from the replays, you can extract the decks. Lars has basically the same stats as an M270. In a... No, it doesn't. <laughs> this is much, much, much worse. Um, RM70, sorry. Uh, RM70. So you know you're paying for it, but it's the it's the uh, the he. Um, the Lars seems to have a very small splash, so it just misses everything, and the salvo length is less, but it fires more quickly. But actually, it doesn't because the reload for the RM70 reloads half the vo volley. It only fires 40. Actually, it does fire quicker because it's 20 rounds per minute over 17. Um, all time slow. No, not really. It's uh, it's about the same. <laughs> Seventeen versus twenty. The he is fine. The fire rate is much slower. What do you mean? Which ones? Uh, so we'll look at a Lars. This has been nuked by that. Look at a Lars, shall we? And. Uh, 
Should be called like Solo or some uh, new, new battle group. There it is. So look at the laws. Uh, laws. So we're gonna time how long it takes from the first shot to the last shot, and then we can work out how quickly it's firing within the salvo. So, right. Go. The main problem is that you can't see it. <laughs> so this is 36 rockets. That was uh, 36 rockets in 35.29 seconds, so yeah, shot every second, as somebody in chat said. Now we'll try the RM-70. They're doing the draft, right, so we don't really have anything better to do. Uh, seven Panzer on thingy, thingy. So that was a shot a second, essentially. And the RM-70. Let's wait for... Speeding it up while it aims. And... Go! Oh yeah, that's definitely faster. That's definitely faster. Lars have an MG3? <laughs> right, that was... 40 rockets in 20 seconds, so it's literally twice as fast. So yeah, that's why. Uh, also, yeah, the caliber does make a small difference because that also changes how wide the splash radius is, which means you're more likely to get hits with the RM-70. So the RM-70 is way better. Way better. Uh, personally, I'm surprised we didn't see a Eurogun out from, what was it, 27Y, 39Y? What was the other division? Because obviously they get... Eurogun... 39Y gets the Urigan. I don't know if it was 39Y. Somebody chime in. Let me know. Let me know. Um, but Vet Lars. Yeah. Yeah, he should have done that actually. He should have had a CV next to it. Because it upvets in and makes it shoot faster. Uh, it, not within the salvo, but it makes it reload faster. And that that's only going to cost you 90 points. He bought four Lars. I really don't think they paid for themselves. I really don't. Uh, I think two Barty would have been better. <laughs> he just brought bought two hundred fifty five millimeters and hit the buildings with the enemy infantry. And I mean, you know, he won. He still won, right? But I think two hundred fifty five millimeters would have been much better than uh, four Lars. They did have a CV with the Lars. Oh, okay. Well, that shows what, how much attention I'm paying. Sadly, I don't have the replay, right? Even though I was in the game, it doesn't save it. So I guess we could watch back my own stream. Ho 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 ho! Picks are out. Ban 82nd, 2nd UK. 27Y and Berlin Gropers into 11th Cavern, 2nd Panzergren. On, what's the map? Hesse. Oh, mate. Berlin Groperung's on Hesse. Oh, you're going to have a tough time, NBK. That's going to be a tough time. Tough, tough time. Because uh, Berlin Groperungs get a lot of MLRS. They get a lot. They get a lot. This division is pretty OP, by the way. I can understand why they're splitting it in half. Um, look. I mean, obviously, the burrito's been nerfed into oblivion, so you don't worry about that. But you can still get five of these. You don't need them. You don't need them. That's enough. That's more than enough. That That's, that's optimal. Um... And then, yeah, you still get T-80BVs, you get T-64s, which have less pen. In the new patch, they have the same pen, and they're the same price. They just went up by two pen for the same price. Smiley face. Um, serviceable air. Obviously not the best ASFs, but what was the other division? 27th. Oh, okay, so the air the air's not going to be particularly fantastic. Well, red. 
Yeah, no, I, I honestly think NBK and NATO boy are fucked. I think this is an outdraft. I think uh, NATO is the weaker side. And I think um, on this map particularly, Grope runs in the town. Um, Tiny 7th in the open. T80BV's into M1A1, so it gives the T80BV an advantage. But in game one, they won, so we'll see. AA is top tier, yeah. Does third always get banned, or why do they pick 11th over it? So third hasn't been banned here. Why do you pick 11th over third? Uh, that's a good question, actually. So what does third get? Third gets decent logi, decent infantry, or decent infantry in quantity, but the actual infantry themselves aren't particularly fantastic because they're all fire teams. There's no more mech rifles. So you get the aero rifles and the engineer's dragon. These are your biggest squads. You get two cards of ten squads. Everybody else is a six squad, six man squad. Which makes it very, very difficult to do it. Oh, this is a 10-man squad, I guess. And you're sort of forced to bring this. Everybody else is a 6-man squad. Very difficult. You do get the M the good M270. Which we've... I've not seen a single M270 this tournament. Although I've not watched every game. I've only watched a few. I've only played a few. Um, you get the M1 H HA. And you get lots of M1A1. Obviously, you, you should be up there in these. Should be up there in these. If you want to fight the T80... Broken vehicle. T80 BV stands for T80 broken vehicle. Uh, you don't get a particularly great recon situation, and you get you don't get the I Hawks. Eleventh gets the I Hawks. You do get Apaches, um, and Toko. So you do get the Apaches, but the Apaches get strafed. You get the Eagle, which is useful, but you don't really get any other good strike aircraft. Compare that to Eleventh Cav. Also, you should subscribe to the channel. Show us the map. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let me do this first. Got plenty of time. These guys take ages. I don't blame them. So. You get a worse logi tap as 11th. You get a worse infantry availability as 11th, but you get better things. The Marder 183 is better than the Bradley because it's it's cheaper and it's got... Um, you, you get the Milan one. You know, it doesn't have the toe, but it's got a lot more armor and it's a lot more affordable. You get this amount of troopers, which are pretty good. You get Engineer's Dragon. You can bring two of them if you want. Uh, mech Rifles you bring if you're a moron. You get High Match Shots and 11 men for 40 points. You don't get the MLRS. You don't get the HAs, but you get a lot more. Well, actually, no, you don't. You get you get about the same amount of tanks, but no HAs. The recon situation is better because you get the ACAVs. Get a big girl squad, LRS, they're good. The the up armoured Bradley is actually really good because it can survive whatever hits it and then the toe smacks them. Whereas this one is three armour, so usually it dies. Uh, the AA, you get the IHOC. You get Stinger. Pivads, you know, that's sort of the same. Then the helicopters, you get the Sea Knights uh, and you get Toe Cobras, so the helicopters are a bit worse. But the Sea Knights are very affordable toe too. Air, you get way worse ASFs. The F-16 is Garbo. You get the LGBT, the A-10 Thunderbolt, the Seed, the Cluster, the AT, yeah. So the, the strike aircraft are better, the ASF is worse. The helicopters are comparable. I mean, they're all going to die to a Jet 1 pass, so it doesn't make too much of a difference. But the Apache is better, so the helicopters are a bit worse. The AA is better. The Recon tab is better. The Tank tab is worse, because no HA. The RT tab is worse, but these guys don't seem to want to bring M270 anyway. The Inf tab is worth it, worse and the Logi tab is worse. So yeah, I'd play 3rd Armoured. <laughs> yep, yep, it's 1-1. One, one. It's 1-1. One, one. Uh, we're just waiting for the third game now. It's 1-1. One, one. Um, and we're looking at 27Y and Berlin Cropers against 11th Cav and 2nd Panzergren. But it's just the IHawks, really. The IHawks do make a difference. Um, the IHawks do make a difference. So yeah, we're just waiting, just waiting on them. Oh, they're in. Uh, Hesse. Spectate. And I said five minute delay, right? So this is Hesse. This is Hesse. And now we have to wait five minutes. So what should we do with five minutes of waiting? Does a toe to two shot BV? Well, now it's time for some advertising while we wait five minutes. NBK is now German. We've now got a German NBK. And, uh, yeah, I, I really want NATO boy and MBK to win. I'm really upset that they lost the pro-packed game. Because I think now they're just going to get steamrolled. I actually don't think they have a chance. Uh, Gropers into second Panzergren. 
Uh, second Panzer Grand gets mauled. And uh, 11th Cav into 27Y. Um, 27Y definitely has the advantage. But NATO boys played 11th Cav extremely well in the last game and beat 39Y with it, so maybe it's not so different. You could explain the way you could see the railway with the lighting. Oh yeah, I remember speaking about this. So there's a lot of, you know, when people make maps, there's a lot of tips and tricks, right? So the map has topography, which means that some parts are higher than other ones. But how do you convey that to the player without um, painting yellow on every surface? I don't know if you guys have seen that. Um, give me a second. So you'll notice that um, if you look at... Uh, modern game design modern game design you've got like um yellow paint video games and yeah so you see in loads of games like so this was the new final fantasy is saying you can climb here bro i painted it yellow you can climb here bro i painted it yellow i've definitely seen it in borderlands and i've definitely seen it in uh titanfall yep yellow paint yellow paint borderlands 3 what yeah there you go you can climb up this ladder bro you can climb up this ladder bro <laughs> and uh yellow paint titanfall yellow paint titanfall map well you're just gonna have to believe me but basically there's like loads of places where there's yellow paint to tell you that you could climb up them i've seen it in loads of games you must have seen it so how else do you convey the uh the topography we use lighting right so if the so we can't see the sun but we can assume that it's coming in from like a 45 degree angle or something because this side of the railway is better lit than this side of the railway and that tells you immediately you don't even have to think about it you probably didn't even notice this but you immediately know that the railway is raised up and it is surely it is yeah it, it, uh, it separates the map and that's because of the lighting and you see the same same thing uh, same thing here so we know that there's a ridge here because of the lighting. You know there's a ridge here because of the lighting. Um, so that that's uh, game design 101. You know, something people don't usually think about. You know there's a ridge here. And you see that if, if lighting can't be used, there is a bit of lighting, then you can make the ridge a slightly different color. There's no grass on the ridge, right? And so you know there's a ridge there without having to use the LOS tool. You compare that to... Uh, I'd actually like to do a comparison to another game. Um, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, and uh, yeah, I've got a, where is it? So this is a, this is Napoleon Total War, and so you see in, in Napoleon Total War, there's like ridges and stuff, right, this is up a hill, this is up a hill over here on the right, this is up a hill and this is down a hill, it's very, very difficult to tell, because there, there's no, you know, it's very, very difficult to tell. You, you've just sort of got to assume, because you can see when the units are on it, this unit is like slightly higher up than it should be uh, on the screen, and that's how you know there's a gradient. So, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Yellow paint might be needed, people are stupid. Oh, I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, video games cater to the lowest common denominator, and um, the average person is pretty thick. Uh, so, so I can understand why. In fact, they 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 cater to as wide an audience as possible. So, so hopefully, the, below the average, below the average, literally the lowest common denominator. But yeah, you see that this is up a hill, and it's actually very very difficult to tell that he's up a hill, uh, because the lighting is flat, and so you can't tell, and it's all the same color. Um, so that's uh, that's interesting, isn't it? Back to the game. How many minutes have we got left? Two minutes, two minutes time for some heli attack two, I think. That's that's Napoleon Total War, bro. Napoleon Total War. Don't know what you're on about, it's Napoleon Total War. Heli attack two? Where's my heli attack two? Where is my heli attack two? Right, here we go. So we're just waiting for the game to start. Um so we'll get Square uh, Circle Co. Here I am playing Heli Attack 2. It's pretty loud. How do I turn it down? There we go. It's 
bit, bit quieter now. Enter full screen. Oh, okay. That's not very intelligent. Oh, here we go. I can just zoom in manually. <laughs> uh, and now you can't see that. We're waiting for the game to start. So I'm going to have to change the chat color. I've only got a minute to play uh, select font. How do I change the color? Oh, whatever. Uh, so here we go. I'm playing Heli Attack 2 while we wait five minutes for the game to start. Did you guys play this as a kid? I used to play this all the time, actually. But I was playing on dial-up, so it took like it took absolutely ages to download the game. I was only allowed on the internet for like an hour a month or something, because uh, we used to have to pay you per minute to access the internet because it was dial-up, and like my parents couldn't use the phone while I was playing on it. Um, whoa! So how do I do the super jump? Oh yeah, right, and it's end to change left. Right, so does this follow the mouse? No, it just literally just follows him. Okay, so I don't even have to aim. Nice gameplay mechanic there. <laughs> well, it's like having a TAEBV. You don't even have to think. Just, yep, everybody dies. Oh, I ran out. Unlike my TAEBVs, which do not run out. Uh, so we're doing pretty well here. Oh, what is that? Oh, no. Um, oh, the, the st we still got to wait five minutes, guys. That wasn't my alarm or anything. We still got to wait five minutes. So I, I'm forced to continue playing. Super Heli, Heli Attack 2. Um, still gotta wait. Oh yeah, man, I got the uh, got the rocket launcher. So this is unguided. Oops. Nice. Oh, I got shot. I got shot. But yeah, we, we, we gotta wait five minutes, guys. Oh, so you see I got him on the rebound there. He's like coming in from the edge of the screen. I can't fly. This isn't very fair. Why can't I fly? Also, why don't I have an infinite number of people? I guess I could start the game again. But yeah, there's... A, oh, the railgun. This thing's really good. You watch this. Bam! Oh, I did. Oh, it's not as good as I remember. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting shot a lot. <laughs> I basically two shot some. Oh, I got shot. Oh, no, it happened again. But yeah, we're just waiting for the game to start, guys. We, we have to wait. A f there's a five-minute delay, so, so we have to wait ages for the... Fi oh, I got extra health as well. Gonna go on for even longer. Um, we gotta wait five minutes for the game to start. That's the only reason I'm playing this. Um, we gotta wait five minutes. Just waiting five minutes over here. And uh, yeah, it's currently one-one. This is the best of three finals uh, for the—I uh, mean, semi-finals for the one thousand one hundred sixty-nine dollar Bono tournament. The winner plays. What is that? Right? What the hell is that? Oh yeah, you put it down in it. <laughs> I remember that. Uh, but yeah, we're just waiting for the game to start, guys. Gotta wait. Oh, he's, he's running away. Whoa, got him. Got him. Uh, I got one left. Bam! Oh, I did kill him. Just gotta wait. Five minute delay, you know. Uh, whoa. I think I got him there. Just waiting for the game to start, guys. Waiting for the game to start. Oh, yeah, I got this again. This is not actually a whole lot of weapon. I, I, I remember the grapple cannon. That's the one that I want. Get that grapple cannon. Um, don't even have to aim. Oh, I got shot again. Hope I get some more HP soon. So yeah, we're, we're just waiting for the game to start, guys. Uh, oh, there we go. What is that? Nuclear bomb. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Oh, I got shot again. No, let me nuke you. No, it missed. Oh, what a waste. What a waste. I, now I, I got to try hard so I don't get shot. One more shot and I'm dead. Just keep dodging. Just keep dodging. Oh, yikes. Oh, that's it. Uh, anyway, I think it's been five minutes now, so we could go back to the game. Such a shame. Such a shame. So let's fast forward through the deployment now. So that was just that five minute delay. We got to wait for the five minute delay. And uh, to be honest, we'll get the switch back to game mode, get the text up, and uh, one, one, BO3. There we go. So now people know that's best of three. Um, right. So we're going to fast forward through the deployment. We got uh, Darix and Tiberius, the, uh, the red, white, and blue. The Tricolor, Tricolor boys against uh, NATO boy and NBK. We've got France versus the uh, 
the west versus the rest. Uh, the beasts from the east versus the best of the west. And uh, this is the deployment. So let's have a look. We're on Hesse. This is a best of three. Winner, winner takes a spot in the grand final and actually a pretty significant prize pool. Let's build up the hype a little bit. Let's look at the prize pool. Matcherino. Oh, yes. Defcon. And, uh, yeah, $1,169 prize pool. Top contributors, David McWilliams, P-Bat, and Hippie. Hello. This is where your YouTube money goes, by the way. I just literally just invest it in tournaments and stuff. I don't really need anything except a PhD, and I can't buy it. Um, well, I guess I could. <laughs> because I uh, I was putting them as one 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 dollar tournament, and so he added it, so it's one one six nine. So I have to say it's sixty nine. Ho 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 ho. And uh, yeah, the let's have a look at the split. Overall winners get fifty percent. And because Darix declines the prize money, if Darix and Tiberius wins, that means Tiberius gets five hundred dollars. <laughs> gets like gets like five hundred and seventy five dollars, something like that. Because Darix is gonna decline it right so surely it's all going to go to tiberius second place gets 25 percent. third place gets 15 and fourth place gets what gets uh okay so 75 85 okay so fourth place gets 10 percent um and yeah so whoever loses here will get a chance to play for third place i guess and whoever wins here will be guaranteed at least at least uh, two hundred and fifty dollars between them, so that's exciting, isn't it? Doesn't that make it more thrilling? Live leak logo, total death. What are you gonna do with a PhD? Uh, I'm finally gonna get out of this shithole, man. Um. Anyway, let's cast the deployments. And uh, yeah, so NBK has split his FS Jaeger all over the map. So what a man for every road. And nobody's covering this far point, so you could get by there. And behind that, we've got scimitars out from NBK. So NATO, yeah, they're going for hotel. So they're going very, very aggressively for hotel. Two M1A1A calves and a pivads and an M1A1 and an M1A3. So NATO boy is on 11th cav. So that's really interesting, actually, because I would have thought NBK would be better on 11th cav because he played it last game. And it seemed to go very well for him. But these guys quite happy to trade it up, I guess. And then in the middle, we just got some Marders playing it very defensively. Not even going into the zone. Like, what? <laughs> They're just missing this one out, I guess. Overall, on the other side, we've got uh, we got some homosexuals here. So we got two Strellas, forward deployed Strellas, two Faggots going to here and to here. SPG9, all very defensive plays from Darix. Darix, of course, on Gropers. Vakshutsen behind. FS Jäger Fuhrer, Grenzers. So what is it? Two CVs and two CVs. Two CVs, two CVs. Yeah, that's interesting. I would prefer to open three CVs on this map because one gets Juliet Papa, one gets November, and one gets Golf. And then you, because these are all plus twos and a plus three, the tick is actually quite severe. And you could always use them for something else later. And yeah, we got FS SPG Knights here. Strellas, Grenzer. Place your bets. Who do you think is going to win? I think Red's going to win. I don't think NATO by an MBK have a chance. I want them to win. Um, but I don't think they have a chance here. I think they screwed up game two. And uh, yeah, so we got Resved could be in P's going down here. Nice screen in force getting up to there, apparently. Can't we see much? Because there's a because of the lighting. Because of the lighting. Because of the lighting. The North or UK as a whole. <laughs> I don't know. We're, I, think, uh, I think we're in for a period of Argentina-style decline, if I'm being entirely honest with you. Um, but let's talk about the video game. So we got a, a faggot going here. That's been spotted by Darix and Estrella 2M. Darix has generously donated those. And now we've got Tiberius rolling in here with two Igglers, a Conkers, a Metis, two BMP2s, a Rocket, and a TA BVK. And I'm assuming planes, because there's not a lot here. There's not a lot here, so I'm assuming planes. And we already see a tornado, and yeah. So I'm going to cast it from this perspective. And it is live. They're playing it right now. So we're off. And I'd like to take this time to thank, uh, thank all of you guys 
um thank you for watching the videos thank you for subscribing to the channel uh in real life i'm not exactly a famous person i mean i, I get on with most people i suppose um but here you know it's very rare for me to to talk to 109 people uh on a daily basis um somebody in real life said to me you, you know you might be the most famous person in this building i was like well oh, that's gonna go down oh no that's not good that's not a good start um and obviously you know 100 views is, is hardly big cheese on the internet but if you think about how many people you talk to in real life it actually might be <laughs> so here we go game three of three winner gets a place in the grand finals winner gets to fight whoever wins between me and t-man and uh menkar and stanag and we see Blue's going hard on this zone. Over here, Darix, we can expect him to push up here. He's not just going to leave this hanging. There is no one here. That is very, very defensive deployment. No CV here. F-16C goes for the... What is that? So that one got taken out by what? The Thunderbolt? Thunderbolt's opening up on these BMP-2s. Get some. This guy's hidden, though. Or he's smoked. And he's got to get out of there before the Igglers take him out. Scimitar? No, I thought that was going for the Scimitar. And Blue just going Hail Mary down here. So much red death. Total red death. And, um... Yeah, so, so good opening salvo from Blue, but like, what is this? Wake up! Wake up! You can tell fatigue's starting to get to these players. Plus two GMT. Or is it... Is Ukraine plus two or plus three? Scimitar goes down to Razvedka. Scimitar goes down to Razvedka. It's not looking good. And this guy's still in this transport. Um, yeah, that was an interesting opening salvo. I think Blue playing a bit too fast there. Need to slow down a little. Uh, need to slow down a little. And yeah, the AT planes out, and that'll clap any of these Abrams. You hate to see it. Fuck the big cheese, man. You have good humor. <laughs> I want to see Derek's versus Hippie. <laughs> Yeah, but I might lose. I might lose against Menkar and uh, Guard Exrams. Um, so Tornado gets a hit and Evax. He doesn't want to fly over all the Igglers. And these guys, they need. They just keep losing things to the main road of death. Just driving down the road and die. <laughs> you hate to see it. Uh, but yeah, you should really know about these. And here we go. Smoke's out. NATO boy doing the smoky trick. I really do think that NATO boy would be better on the inf div and NBK would be better on the tank div. Um, Tiberius plays a lot of 39Y, so... And this is similar, similar enough. So Derek's on a plus two. Derek's and Tiberius on a plus two. Boys in red, packed. Packed on a plus two. What are the team names? They, they picked an egregiously large team name on purpose to upset me. That gets out of rounds, though, and so is the Conkers, and so is the Strella. Oh, no, Conkers has one. Oh, here we go, HE bomb, it's going for the ACAV. The ACAV's low. Oh, no, it went for the Milan. And the Tornado F3 should get this. Really, what? No, he evac He could have used the guns. He would have got it with the guns. Oh, man, that was not ideal. And then he takes a hit on the way out. Uh, Razvedka BMP2 gets first shot off on the Bradley, uh, but the toe, you don't dodge the toe. And something went down there. Uh, interesting to see NATO boys strat. He's, he's basically playing it the same way NBK plays it. Uh, but Darix, 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 Darix. He's not just going to let NBK just sit around here. NBK, like, pushing over here. He's going to lose this as well. Fatigue really starting to get to these guys. You can tell the quality of play has gone down from game one. Game one was an absolute mind-blowing game. <laughs> I really think you should check it out. Cluster's coming in for the tanks. One behind, one in front. And, yeah, that's dead. ACAV makes it out. Uh, and the planes make it out. So, yeah, they're, they're playing too fast here. And they, this is this is going to be a big problem. <laughs> <laughs> Darix, all he has to do is click Q and click U. And that, that's the end of it. A Leopard 1s, Dying to Razvedka, BMP 2s. Um, McRifle's Law coming out here. But this is so close to the, the Reinforce. Nice straight road. Uh, what's that going for? The, the transport. Um, but yeah, NBK and Nailbug both going heavy on this side. Leopard 1s. Uh, can you even see it? It can. Bit of a lack of micro here. Tiberius could get this out. Content to just take hits. Darix is awakening. 
and yeah this is really not good at all if you get some marders to here they can shoot the guys as they come across the road it's like, it's like one like behind this building one behind this building and a couple in these trees here maybe one here you can sort all this out but it's uh, it's not looking good for blue because this isn't really going anywhere and uh, this is really about to be a problem uh, no grad purchases for red yet TABV's being printed uh, this is taking too long and I feel like the players know that and that's why they're rushing this guy hasn't been repaired He's just sending them forwards on one HP. I do not understand the mindset. I do. He's trying to get there fast He's in a hurry, but yeah over here. Oh dear. Oh dear over here Leopard one though. It's, it's these are actually doing decent work to be honest um, And the Keppard's opening up on the Bastions and Problem is, it's only got 800 rounds, so it's actually going to run out of ammo pretty quickly, and it doesn't really accomplish a whole lot. This guy got an RPG? No, he's got an RPG. The, the Marder's what you want. Uh, a cab goes down because he sent forwards a 1 HP A cab, and this guy's a 2 HP A cab. He needs to stop doing that. He needs to heal up his tanks. This could be a good learning for him. Cluster coming out, going for what exactly? Uh, I don't think he got anything. But it gets out. The eye hawks, you need a second eye hawk up here, I suppose. More smoke coming in. Mech rifles getting in. The CV tanks being microed expertly around the smoke, so it's only dealing with the guys that are here, and nothing there could kill it. The M1A ones are being sent up. The ACAV's still in the game. He's actually going to repair this one. Incredible. Over on this side, Gepard goes down to the metas. And yeah, Darix is going to get in here. Is he full sending? No, he's given up on that. He's, uh, where are his points? Where are his points? Big Girl Squad doesn't have an AT. Where's Derek's reinforcements? Is, is it just this? Uh, so he's just got a tick, so we'll see what he buys. He buys uh, that. Hello, I like money. Kushik became a member. Oh, hey, thank you. Thank you for becoming a member. Uh, you get the videos up to a week early. You get members only videos. Uh, you get your name on the screen. Not right now, of course. Well, I mean, actually, yeah, you do. You get the spinning bojo. So that AT plane, oh, it takes out an M1A1. That's worth, it's worth, and it's going to make it out. It's going to get out of there. Need another pivads or something. Um, this is getting really tough. They need a smoke and CV. Where's the CV? Oh, it died. It was an M1A1, I remember now. Over here, big problems. Big trouble in Little Hessa. And uh, yeah, the, the, the gropers, man, once they get in, you need, you need Milans to stop the gropers. Stop, uh, stop yourself from getting groped. Because they're going to grope the crap out of you. Uh, AT plane goes down over here. Uh, honestly, it's kind of hard to pay attention to both. So we'll just leave that as a sideshow up here as we uh, pay attention to down here. Blue's getting in the zone. Cobra versus TABV, but he's sending the Abrams. Actually, Blue's taken this. Where's, where's, what happened to all the stuff? There were loads of tanks here. What happened to the CV tank? I missed it all. I'm such a terrible caster. This guy's just getting bullied. The tanks are coming forwards. The ping's coming out here. Um, they know about the Grenza moving through. I can hear a thunderbolt. Smoke, please, for the love of God, stop losing these two AT plates. Um, is he going to get... Please, gun him. Gun him. Gun him. Gun him. No, he went for the T-80BV. Could have got that. Oh, well. There's no AA here. This is total air bully. Total air bully. Total air bully. I really could have used a second IHawk, honestly. There's so many planes. Like, so that's where Derek's points are going. He's buying planes for this side. So where's the CV? CV later, I guess. So, red winning over here, but not as much as blue is winning over here. But I do think the late game belongs to red. Ah, uh, the blob. The blob gets blobbed. Uh, Thunderbolt trying to get guns off on it. No, come on, keep the guns up. You could. Oh, wow, well, he gets them anyway. Got him with a single burst. Cluster now coming in. This is absolutely crazy airwaves. Where's the AA? <laughs> but they are going down. They are going down. The Pivads was destroyed, though, by the Cluster. And the IHOT collapsed the SU because the Pivads got one damage on it. So, wow. That was incredible. Going over here. Nothing, nothing's really happening. Uh, the Vakshutsen are in. There's Marders coming up. But the main point of contention is, that for some reason, there's fighting going on over here. Thunderbolts evac'd finally. T80 BV on the board. Um, I don't think this can see it. No, it can. It can. Gets a shot. Gets a firing computer reset hit, which makes the accuracy go down. I don't know by how much. Uh, CV finally on the board. Whoa. So, NATO boy. Telling me to fuck off. 
Uh, he can play 11th Cav. He can lose M1A once to Mopin Strelke. Uh, <laughs> he can lose guys to dive bombers. Oh man, this guy. He's having such a bad time here. Smoke. Okay, I'll just reverse. But yeah, the, the plane losses on the right side have been pretty incredible. That's really starting to catch up with Pact now. Those losses there. But this is a big problem for NATO when the CV's coming in. And there is no counter CV because this guy's back here. Um, so it's going to be... That's plus two. And this is a plus two. Where, why can't I see it? Yeah, plus two Papa. Um, so yeah, Tiberius needs to rebuild, taking some time to rebuild. Over here, the fight's still on. Uh, the M, this can't shoot, apparently. This is just left in the open, getting shot. Needs to be in this one. This guy's gonna get in. Laser guided bomb, loses targeting, then gets hit by 10 million Strellas and explodes. All those Strellas hit. Really, really unlucky there. Although they are all three there. So he's brought max vet Strellas. <coughs> NATO boy more comfy with playing NATO, yeah, who would have thought? And CV's coming in here, uh, which means it will be his contested zone. Hang on, what happened to... He died, but how the hell did he die? How did he die? Somebody tell me. Did the M40 shoot him to death? It might have been it. Uh, yeah, it might have been it. And the F40 got him. Uh, we'd love to see a bit of tube arty on the back here, just start hitting these Strela positions. Um, over here, not much going on, so this is going to put them on a plus two. Uh, because they're going to recap this zone. Is there a backup CV coming? No. Switching to helicopters. There's no AA here, so that's big. So they'll be forced to send out the planes. There's no AA here. It's crazy how people forget. Um, it's crazy how people forget. AT plane. Oh, man. Lose attack in here. They just don't sit still. But this AT plane, it's uncontested. The IHOCs haven't been purchased yet. It's going to get a kill. It loses sight. It loses line of sight. Though it does not get a kill, so I was wrong. I was wrong to say that. Uh, the, these rocket helis are really going to make a difference because there is no counter to this. Um, ping's coming out. Derek's pinging this. He knows about it. Pretty juicy target, actually. Both guys in the same building there. And yeah, this is a big problem for Blue. <laughs> There's no way. Yay! So they buy the Thunderbolt. Here we go. Thunderbolt versus three Strella. Max Pet Strella. SU flying around. That IHawk is too far back. Needs to be brought up. Gets a miss. Too far back. But I just love the aggression. I love the aggression from uh, NATO boy and NBK. Um, I don't know where NATO boy is from. I know NBK is Ukrainian. Um, but yeah, losing guys in transport is never fun. And yeah, yeah, they get both of those. He's got to evac it right now because the Strellas. Strellas are going to strell you. He goes for the ATI. Oh, nah, he's just not bothered. But he's getting strelled. He's getting strelled. He just doesn't care. He's, just, he's going to eat it again. He just goes for the AT gun. Oh, man. Is he going to go for that? PA? Yeah, he dies like an idiot. Because he's... <laughs> but it's, hey, it's funny to watch. It's good for us. Uh, this guy is going to definitely beat this guy. And T-80BV track broken here. Uh, there, there needs to be more reinforcements here, actually. There is, actually isn't a whole lot here. M40A1 recoilless rifles is not the buy there. You need M1A1s. IHawk's been purchased. This needs to be moved up. But he sold the transport. He sold the transport. So it's going to take a long time to get there. Pivad's finally on the ball here. Um, IHawk not been unloaded yet. See if this guy can get some good side shots off. M1 Abrams being used very offensively. No backup supplied there. Over here, Derek slowly but surely getting squeezed out by double bar. Actually, it's just MBK. It's just MBK here. And NATO boys pushing mid. Um, you got to be careful about getting flanked. So the IHawk is actually very close. But if this SPG-9 gets it, oh, this is going to be big. What did it go for? That AT plane, man. That AT plane. Yeah, I saw the IHawk explode on the corner of my screen. Um, yeah, so that's a uh, big shame. Come on, stick with him. Don't evac. Don't evac this time. Just stick with him. Get him with the guns. Nice one. Tor is gonna open up on that tornado. It's actually going for the Cobras, and it actually hits them, which is actually quite surprising. Uh, this Cobra probably also going to die. Uh, gets the helicopter there. He's trying to 1v1 the Tor. Uh, the Tor <laughs> eventually hits him. Over here, NBK slowly squeezing these guys out. Darix has bought an additional Fura, but this is not going to work out because they'll still be on a plus two with a contested zone. That Milan needs to get back. 
T55 AM2s coming down here to to deal with the fact that there's no real tanks apart from the Leopard 1, which is worse. And um, yeah, so Tiberius has stacked this now, so these guys really need to get back. This is the mistake I made. Me and T-Man versus Latham's in game two, we rolled this zone, and then we just kept feeding people into it, and we just lost so much, it just wasn't worth it. Um, because you're getting squeezed from two sides, you need to take all this, and you need to take all this, and then you go for the zone. But you, people, everybody, it's just human nature, you just see the road, you just see the zone, eye forwards, eye forwards, eye forwards, you know, my reinforcements go this way. And so, Integer had guys around here, BMP2s, and Lathan's had guys up here, which would like poke over and shoot. And that's how we lost so much on that zone. But there you go, Fuhrer's in the zone. Fuhrer's gonna die to the FS Jaeger and the Jaeger Aufklärs. I would love to see this guy come back. Mass Panzer Jaeger by. That, that what? <laughs> that reeks of panic. What is that? <laughs> Mass Panzer Jaeger by. Going for the exposed Leopard 1A, 1A, 1A1. Would love to see some more Ihawks, because second gets those as well. Why are there only two Ihawks on the field? Why is one all the way back here? Um, you know the enemy likes planes. T80 BVK goes down here. I'm sorry, guys. I can't pay attention to it all at once. I guess I'm suffering from a bit of fatigue as well. But yeah, Darix, he's he's switched up his game strategy. So now it's about the fire support outside the town instead of units that work in the town. You need fundamentally different units when you're inside the town and when you're outside the town. When you're outside the town, you need tanks, direct fire support, secure the edge of the town. But once it's building to building fact fighting, that's where you need the the Jaeger Führer. Uh, sorry, the uh, the Bachschutz and what have you. FS Jaeger taking out Mot Razvedka there. They managed that, but there's nothing left here. This is actually very scary. This is very, very scary for Blue. They're not sending anything there because they're just so concerned about this. This is a big mistake. They're, they're going to lose this zone. The T80 BVs, two T80 BVs is enough. And, uh, you know, you don't go fencing against T80 BVs because he can survive a hit and you can't. Over on this side, they have managed to resecure this. I just. <sighs> I do like the aggression, it makes for good watching, but yeah, that rocket launcher range means that he will shoot this, he will shoot this, so he is, he's just on an attack move, so he's smoking it up, needs to get these into here, but look, this is a big problem, this is a big problem, um, wir haben ein serious problem, as they say in the Netherlands, uh, because there's nothing to stop this, uh, there's one M1A1, this guy will get some good side shots. Um, Gepard goes down over here to Motostrokey Metis, ostensibly. And, uh, yeah, T-55 going down to this Milan. It's either a new one or it's been reloaded, reformed. And, whoa, I'm, it, the, the aggression, the aggression. This guy's gonna die, though. He's about to get... Oh, my God, what is that? Uh, just play a little bit safer, bro. Just repair your tanks. <laughs> just repair your tanks. <laughs> no. No, there's no time to waste. I've seen this happen so many times from NATO boy. He's just like, my tank 1 HP, I attack. All three games we've seen this from him. All three games. M1A1 should really win that fight, but I don't know if he can actually see it. He can't see it, so it's just going to be getting free hits. But hey, it's neutralized. Two CVs coming out here. One Tiberius, one Darix. So that's a that's a bit of miscommunication there from those players. Can really tell that the fatigue's trying to starting to catch up with people. M1A1 goes down here. Yeah, I, I actually think that Tiberius is going to take the zone back uh, because these guys don't have anything there because they're all attacking over here. Which I think they should have secured this a bit heavier before starting their attack over here. But easy to say, hard to do. Where's that CV that was here? Did it die as well, or did it get pulled back? I think it died. The the red CV because he bought a backup CV. Oh yeah, it was here, wasn't it? And it got shot by the guys in these buildings. So, yeah, Derek's losing the fight here, big time. Plus six to, uh, plus four now to NATO boy and, uh, NBK. But, uh, this is bad. This is very bad, because this guy's one HP, and, uh, this guy's probably gonna kill him. This guy's not in the right... Oh, they surrendered. Huh. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, th I thought there was still a path back into that game. I thought there was still a path back into that game. I think, uh, I think they tilted and surrendered. So there you go, your first grand finalist, ladies and gentlemen, NBK and NATO boy. The the balance man himself lost. GG, GG all round. I'll type a, a GG, GG. The Ukrainians are showing NATO how to fight. Upset. That was that was incredible. I I just want to go back and watch that because that was. Oh, I can't. Yeah, I remember now. I can't. I can watch it from my own stream. 
I thought Pact was supposed to be overpowered. How did NATO win all three games? Uh, where's the... Uh... Right. Is, there, is there like a ban option? You go against the narrative, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there, there you go. There you go. Derek's lost. Um, NATO won every single game. But no, I, I think I think that might have actually been NATO boys better at NATO. <laughs> I really do think that. Uh, because if you check out... I don't have him on my friends list. Oh, it's going to be hard to find him now. Where is he? Come on, NATO boy. Tell me if you see NATO boy. I want to show you how many games he has as NATO and how many is packed. Where are you? I don't see him. I don't see him. That's a shame. Does anybody know what rank NATO boy is? Hippie's wife? What the fuck? Who is this? <laughs> Who is this? Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Um, oh, I need those replays. I need those. Where's flipping NBK? NBK, my man. Send me that replay. GG, mate. Send me that game three replay, please. Oh, but yeah, interesting, interesting, really good game. I want to go back and watch that, but the only way I can until I get those replays is uh, is to is to watch my own stream. Oh, that, that was a bit anticlimactic, actually. It was going so well, and then they all of a sudden just sort of gave up. They just sort of gave up. Oh, yeah, this is what we're here for. Heli attack, best part of the stream. So, let's talk about game plan. Game plan. NATO boy literally just rolls down mid and just full sends all the way down here. To be honest, Tiberius got outplayed. There's no, there's nothing else to it. Instead of buying tanks, they bought like 10 planes. <laughs> I'm not even joking as well. You go back. Let's just watch it. Instead of buying tanks, they were just like, buy plane, buy plane, buy plane. And NATO boy just bought M1A ones. <laughs> and eventually he just won. <laughs> um... NBK is, an, uh, is a Red Dragon player, and to be honest, Red Dragon's got a lot more in common with Warno than it does with SD2. Uh, so, so yeah, the the AA game from Blue was better. It, it good. It could have been a bit better. I think if NBK or NATO Boy had bought an additional IHawk, uh, they could have got a lot more of these plane kills. But you see that there's a plane. Uh, so that's we've we've just seen two planes, right? And then we look for more planes. Um, but they just kept buying them. They just kept buying planes. Here's another plane. Plane number three. More planes. More planes. More planes. Uh, HE bomber. This one gets out because he evacs early. I remember this. Yeah, he evacs early. Like one second more with the guns, he would have killed that. So a bit of a misplay. And then he evac the wrong way as well. Uh, that's obviously going to go like that. Uh, clumping these up is, is really not the play. Um... Losing people in the transport salt game, you could tell everybody was starting to get tired. It's extremely difficult to play this game for two or three hours in a row at high level. So that's two more planes. So how many planes are we up to now? Five. That's five planes in five minutes. Um, and it just kept going. It just kept going. Let's see if NATO boy replied. I have turned off automatic replay save. <laughs> of my life. Uh, right, where's... I'm not asking the guys that lost. They'll be very upset. Uh, uh, so we're just waiting for the replays. Just waiting for the replays. Uh, this is... Uh, a. GG well played. Please, can you send game three replay? That's a shame. I was, I was hoping for a 30 minute slog. Um... Because everybody's gonna tune out now while we wait for the replays. But but this was this was a really good game, really good game. I want to review all three games and then I can finally go do something else. Uh, let's have a check of the chat. Yeah, here we go. So that how many planes is that now? Like seven? Because they've not repaired in that time. They've not repaired in that time. So that's like seven planes. And meanwhile, NATO boy and NBK are buying ground units, or just NATO boy by himself, because <laughs> NBK's got another problem to deal with. So so yeah, it was it was really good strategy, really good strategy. Don't overinvest on air. So, thank you for becoming a member. Are you QC app or is that somebody else? Um, I'll tune out when the pizza arrives. 
but yeah, really, really good game. Really good game. All three games. I This is what the tournaments are all about. And I, the team tournaments are good. Credit to the organizers. They played NATO versus Pact. A lot of people told them, there's another plane. There's another plane. <laughs> uh, a lot of people told them not to because Pact is stronger. It's not fair. And they did it anyway. And we get to see the way the game is really supposed to be. The game is not supposed to be some 1v1 fest, right? It's supposed to be team games. It's supposed to be NATO versus Pact. What is that? What plane number is that? There's another plane. There's another plane. There's another plane. Meanwhile, NATO boy, holding his nerve, right? Uh, buys a couple planes, to his credit. He bought an A-10. That's probably the same one as before, actually. Buys some F-16s. NBK spotting him some tornadoes. And uh, and he just sits there and he just keeps killing the planes. Just keeps killing the planes. Too many... Too... Look at this! Even more planes! <laughs> I need that replay. I need to count the planes. <laughs> What's that? What's that? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, which one is... Uh, which one's which? So this is 1945, which this will be game three, I think. Oh no, maybe he's just uploading them one at a time. Uh, really exciting games. What What do you think, guys? Did you enjoy this? Did you enjoy watching this? Um, did you enjoy watching this? So I just want to watch that game three. I need to count the planes. I need to count the planes, which means I need to restart the game. Because I will have to drop this into my folder. Really exciting games. Let's have a look at that replay. And yet yeah, NATO won all three times. Hippie blown the fuck out. Hippie eviscerated. You should rehydrate. <laughs> no, I'm not sure if that came up actually. It might have been. Uh, I'm on desktop mode. I should rehydrate. Uh, but no, first we need to check the replays. I want to check the replay of game three. But yeah, that, that was really good. See you around, Kemobub. Yeah, tomorrow tomorrow is the second semi-final. T-Man will be live streaming. Me and him versus Menkar and Guard Xrams. It's a proper grudge match because um, the Ukrainians think I'm a Vatnik. And they absolutely hate me. <laughs> oh, that was on Twin Cities. That's the wrong one. Damn. Uh, let's get some more. One sec. Just need to switch to... Oh yeah, the game is actually closed. Uh, uh just get rid of that. Sorry, I, I need the privacy filter for one second so I don't accidentally dox myself. Don't want to accidentally dox myself. But yeah, if you, if you missed game one, and game two, and game three, uh, watch all of them. They were all really, really, really good games. Uh, right, so let's, uh, let's get the game back up. Got the replays in. We should be up. Still black screen. That's weird. I just want to, I want to count the planes. Because that was actually something that I didn't notice while it was happening. I only noticed it after the game had ended and I thought about it. All they did was buy air into, um, Hessa. Into this, like, NATO boys push. NATO boys ACAV push. And these guys must have done some serious practice. From what I understand, NBK and NATO boy have been practicing against, like, Homelander and uh, somebody else. Like, they've all been practicing with each other, which is good. I think Darix and Tiberius practice by playing each other. They just play each other in 1v1s loads. That's how they get so good. Uh, you know, T-Man practices by just playing ranked all day. I practice by not playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> Might say a lot. Right, so, planes. Three packed, uh, three, three ASFs out from NATO at the start. Um, the F-16 for the helicopter. Didn't actually get it, but the next one gets it. And the Thunderbolt confirms the kill with the tornado. Right, so that's three planes. I want to count packed plane purchases this game. That's the only one. <laughs> MiG-29 by the name of Borin. And he comes out, what, what, what does this plane achieve? It dies to an F-16AA and a Thunderbolt. So the Thunderbolt confirms that kill, F-16AA, yep, and, the, and that's two. So AT plane by the name of Zutter. So we've got Boris and Zutter. Uh, this Thunderbolt probably, I think it dies, doesn't it? No, it, it, this one gets out. It's the one that was over here that died. And what's his name? Mitchell. 
It's really difficult to keep track. Yeah, losing loads of people just down the road. There was something like that over here as well. So F.S. Jaeger just... Oh, no, it was here as well. Yeah, just running down the road at the start, losing guys. Very, very, very difficult. Um, the Scimitar is just getting eviscerated by Resmed Kambian P2s. All right, plane number three. L Luda Chinky, plane number three. And that's still live. Another transport lost to the Conquerors. Smoke finally starts now. And, you know, NATO boy, such an aggressive player. Really, really good to watch. Plane number four, Stesser. That dies. No, this is the one that survives. Yep. Plane number four. Um, I might accidentally double count some play. This was, yeah, another one that just died on the road. Oh, no, he got out. Plane number five. Plane number six, Hammerschmidt and Grob. What did they accomplish? They killed the CV tank, that's pretty big. And they both get out. So that's six planes now, in five minutes. One ASF and five strike aircraft. It's all strike aircraft. Plane number seven. Plane number eight. We're at, we're at six minutes. There have been eight plane purchases. Like, it doesn't surprise me that NATO boy and NBK spotting him some troops, actually. Some Zikarungs here. Uh, some Panzergrenadier Marders. Yeah, so they're both going on this. They're both going on this and just letting this uh, be deleted. So how many planes were we up to? Like eight? Is that eight? I think we're on eight. Uh, um, plane number nine. Kellerman. Plane number t Actually, this might be the one from before. So this is plane number nine because we've already seen a Hammerschmidt. So plane number nine. Uh, Hammerschmidt makes it out again. We've already seen a Hammerschmidt. And, yes, yeah, so this went down to what? Because I know it died. Oh, it just got tattooed by Bradley. Plane number 10. Zutter. I, uh, did we see a Zutter? I think well, we might have seen a Zutter. So that's 10 planes. 11th plane, Jurgensen. Like, what? <laughs> Meanwhile, NATO boys just like, I buy ground units. <laughs> I buy M1A1. <laughs> it's too many planes. Too many planes. Because they, they're panicking. They're like, oh, we need something fast. We need something fast. And all this time, NATO boy, smoke and go, smoke and go. Definitely superior smoke play from the, the Wargame Bros. Plane number 11? Or is this... Have we seen this guy before? Some of these are, are repeats. So we've seen this guy before. I don't know if we've seen Halbron before. I think we're up to 11 planes because we've seen some of them multiple times. Um, and yeah, what are the planes achieving? Grob, we've seen Grob and Hammerschmidt, so the, 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 we're still at 11 planes, but now we lose Grob and we lose Hammerschmidt. <laughs> and this, this Thunderbolt from before is still uh, Mitchell, which I think was the guy from before. So just massive overinvestment in planes on this side. Stessa, that's plane number 12, surely. Not seen that guy before, he's dead. Ihawks one-shot those. Too many planes. Too many planes, I think that's what it comes down to. Meanwhile, you know, that, that was not a great purchase. Gents, have we seen Gents? Is that plane number 13? Is that plane number 13? I'm not really counting very well. <laughs> and uh, NATO boy, man, he's like, okay, I win. Next, I attack here. Like, immediately, he didn't even wait for the Ihox. And so he lost a couple. Of, we've seen Kellerman before. I'm not counting very well. I'm, I'm pretty tired, to tell you the truth. But you get the point, right? Too many planes, not enough ground units. Whereas, meanwhile, Mitchell over here did a lot of work before he got way too greedy and died to Max Vet Strellers. The Max Vet Strellers actually did a lot of work. They got the LGBT as well. And then, right, so, so they won this. And then, instead of reinforcing it, they, they just fully YOLO'd into here. So, so NATO boy was like, I'm going to attack this now. You can get your zone back. I'm going in over here. And to be honest, I thought this was a misplay, but it worked. It worked because Red doesn't actually have that many ground units because they keep buying planes. So, so you know, and, and eventually the, the AA catches up with them eventually, right? There goes another one. So m too many planes, too many planes, not enough ground units. Like over here, this was just not reinforced, and then this was a panic, pure panic. You don't buy five Panzer Jaeger. That was definitely a panic. And uh, and now, you know, they're, they're split. They don't know what to do. Like he's trying to, Darix is trying to keep his lead here. We've seen Zutter before. Um, sometimes they get the same name though, though so that, that can be frustrating. This, this gap is firing everything about Panzer Jaeger. And, uh, and yeah, so like, Darius is trying to get in here while they're losing this zone. 
Might have been better to stop this and then go back for that. I don't know. I don't know. It's difficult. Once you're that far behind, just too many air purchases. Too many air purchases. NATO boy doing that thing where he sends in his 1 HP tanks. <laughs> That's how he lost that one. Um, but yeah, eventually the planes start going down because they just both both 11th Cav and 2nd Panzergren get I hawks. NATO boy queuing for 10v10 now, what a chat. <laughs> it's still not enough. Um, so yeah, really, really good games. Really good games. So here are your first finalists for the DEFCON 2 tournament. You've got NBK with 13 ranked games this season. 125 games total. And NATO boy with 12 ranked games this season. And 300 games total. Th these guys must have reset their rank. NATO boys had way more than 300 multiplayer games. I remember in the last patch, he'd had 300 rank games. Minimum. Derek, zero ranks. 915 total. Tiberius, 80. And yeah. Oh, that that's me. Oh, yeah, because he sent me the replays. So there you go. That That's uh, that's everything. No grad from Pact. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. It's like they didn't... I feel like they didn't have the time, but they didn't open FOB, so that wasn't in their game plan. Really interesting games. Really interesting games. Got some messages. Thank you. Uh... <laughs> so that that's everything. Uh, there's nothing left to say. I'm not going to waste any more of your time. So if you enjoyed the stream and you're not subscribed, subscribe. There's more like this. And uh, yeah, we'll just show the bracket one last time. Just show the bracket one last time. Challenge. Oh, yes. So, looks like there's no admins watching this stream because they've not... Uh... <laughs> uh, sorry, I was leaking private DMs there. Your first finalists are NBK, a NATO boy representing Ukraine and somewhere else. Don't know where NATO boy's from. In the finals. And they will face either Hippie, that's me, whoa, and T-Man plays representing the UK and somewhere else, don't know. And uh, they're up against <laughs> Menkar and Guard Exrams representing Ukraine. So tomorrow at 1500 GMT, I suggest you tune in to uh, twitch.tv slash plays at 1500 GMT. And there you will see the semi-finals cast live. So goodbye. Thank you. I really enjoyed casting this. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, I really enjoy casting these games. Um, goodbye.